good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, March 21st. Um, we are the SPAC Communications Subcommittee. Um, we're meeting in Jordan Conference Room with members of our committee. Uh, Bruce Lockwood's also here from Portland Research. We have our architects and um, others online, members of the committee, and our owners rep as well, representatives online as well. So we have a lot to do today. Uh, we're aiming to uh, work from 8.30 to 10.30. Maybe we'll finish early, maybe not. Uh, but thanks everyone for giving, giving your time today. Um, so we're going to approve the minutes, then we're going to dive into the survey draft. Um, we're going to then move on to the informational insert, consider what we want to include with the survey, um, and then talk, uh, finish up by talking about communication from the upcoming forum on the 4th, April 4th, and the building tours on April 6th, and then finish with public comment. So a lot to do. Um, we've done well. Uh, lately sharing the air, making sure everyone has a chance to talk. I will continue to try to facilitate that way um, so everyone feels they are heard and uh, everyone feels they're listened to. Um, so can I have a motion uh, on the March 14th minutes, please? Oh, sir. Any makes the motion? Second? Second. Okay, one second. Can I take just two minutes and um, show my appreciation for Emily in the detail of capturing those minutes? I think very helpful. They were to be helpful this week on the one to remember what this is. I appreciate the detail. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Okay. All approved. Got that? Emily? Oh, no. Hello. It will come back. We got an internet trouble again. Probably it's all of us at once. So. Uh, 12 people bring down the town hall. <laughs> the whole system. <laughs> Some infrastructure issues. So while that's spinning around, um, what I'm going to ask Bruce to do is go quickly through the draft survey, each question, share what the question is and what the rationale, and then we're going to come back to the top and go through each question with questions. So we questions or comments we have. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Bruce is going to go through, um, share right. each question, rationale, and then we're going to go back to the top with questions and comments. Go ahead, Penny. Go. When we move back, yeah. when we move back to objective. Yes. Before we start yeah. going through, so I'd like to do that. Say that again. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm mumbling oh, this okay. morning. I've been up too late looking at budget stuff. So anyway. Um, Go back to the objective, just so we, because we had a lot of input last week, mm -hmm. if I go back to the original objective, some of the pieces may not be in there, so okay. that's all. Okay, so we're going to obviously bounce in and out, but we've got work to do, so we're going to go forward. Um, so Bruce, if you could go through your draft, yep. uh, each question, and we'll quickly go through what the question is, what you're trying to achieve there. And then we'll get back to the top again and have a rich discussion. So thanks for coming. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so the very first thing, uh, we just have to check that I have the right deadline date. But, um, Where is that? Listed? In the intro. Oh. Um, April 26th is what I can. I think it's going to be prior to that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 24. Well, we need the results. We need your analysis around the Oh, okay. Yeah. They're really going to have about a week. So if we assume first class mail, three days mail, or yeah. we would not to get it out of the four. Eight. Yeah. You get about to the 17, 18, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, the first question, so just an overall, I took questions from the summer 2023 survey uh, and used some of those questions in this survey uh, to help measure uh, changes in or improvements of whatever of some of the metrics that we were talking about. And the best way to do that instead of creating a brand new question is to repeat a question and compare the results. So that, that's, uh, that's a large part of this. So the very first question was how people voted in the November 2022 election. 
that was a major uh, question that we weighted the data in the summer of 2023 so that so we could replicate the um, disposition of the Cape Elizabeth population at the time of the last referendum. And I think it's a good practice to continue uh, doing so with this survey. Um, <clears throat> then questions two and three, uh, four and five, six and seven, address each of the three options. I prefer not to call them option one, option two, and option three, because that gives an ordinal progression that I don't want to have. Basically, it's a pair of questions for each. We use a static metric, a scale, to get people to rate the option. And they're ideally, although human nature with the paper survey, it's probably not going to happen. But ideally, you want people to focus on one option at a time during this part of the survey. Um, and just simply have them rate their overall impression of the option and write down in their own words why they gave the rating that they did for each option. So the, um, the idea is to get some uh, individual feedback on each of the three options. Then again, going back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, sorry to throw that one out there, um, but um, we then have question eight, and I know there was some discussion around having a question like this, but I think it's very important for people to pick out the option that they support the most at this time. I tried to phrase the question so that um, people will understand that it is not a vote, and I even added that, in fact, the final school building's proposal for the next referendum could look quite a bit different as new information is learned and we try to build a community consensus. And if that doesn't allay fears of this being a vote, I don't know what we can do. So I'm sure we'll come back to this question. Okay. But it also includes not only picking an option, but on the right-hand side, you have none of the options. They don't know right now, which means they, they haven't decided, obviously. And then you gotta throw in a prefer not to respond so that you have a response for everybody. And then um, the idea with question nine is you narrow down, it's basically a summary for an individual of the most important aspects of three, five, and seven. Um, that's what we're trying to get at. And when they really consider all three, these are the, the features, the benefits that that particular person is really focusing on. Uh, question 10. So there was a lot of discussion at the last meeting about evaluating communication. So again, with the benefit of having the summer 2023 survey, I inserted question 10, which is actually question three. Oh, Bruce, you have this. Sorry. I know it was on the survey. Original one. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. I, I pulled it from the original. I, I kind of had to. Um, Oh, it was about having enough information. Anyways, feeling informed about the proposals. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. Here it is 3E. <laughs> so I basically took that one rating so that we can compare this, the results to question 10, with the results to question 3E. Can you explain that again? I'm sorry. Hmm? Can you explain that again? So question 10, so question 10, 11, and 12 are all about evaluating the community, the effectiveness of communications and the information that's being put out there. So question 10, I took the, a piece that we had in the summer 2023 survey, which is question 3E, mm -hmm. and just singled that one piece out to create question 10. So we have a tracking mechanism, okay. because again, tracking, is really beneficial than having a, just a brand new metric to look at in, in, by itself. Um, question 11, 
uh, where do people get their information? That's a repeat from summer 2023. That was question nine. In summer 2023, I did flip out uh, in 2020, in the summer 2023, we had one response category that was roadside signs. I took that out and put in the SBAC slash town website. Uh, I think it's important to also label that as a town website because some people will just figure they're going on the town website. Is that a duplicate of a building project website? You have a website with each one. Those are two different things. Mm -hmm. Is it so good? We have kelizabeth.com yeah. on the town website, yeah. kelizabethsbac.com is the building project website. So maybe. I, well, we can, we, can, you know, we can work about that. Yeah, and I think there are a couple of things in here. Like we haven't had design workshops this time. We've had right. public forums, right. and then neighborhood forums. So right. we kind of try to combine. OK. Yeah. yeah, the idea was to try to, to be able to have the tracking mechanism. Um, <clears throat> then I. <clears throat> Excuse me, I thought it was important to find out if, in fact, people have looked at any of the information. Uh, even though it's a little, the question's a little awkward coming after question 10 and 11, but I, I was having a real estate issue. Um, and so I think this kind of gets at, so you can see if people have, in fact, read and or reviewed information from uh, SBAC, um, they have not, but they are aware of it. They have not, and they're not aware of it. And then again, we have to have prefer not to answer and don't know just so people have a place to put their answers. You usually don't have skip patterns, which is logic written into paper surveys because people don't follow directions. So we're gonna have to clean this question. But question 13, if they, have read and reviewed. So technically, only people who say yes in Q12 are supposed to answer Q13. But it's a paper survey. Some people will follow directions, some people won't. We, but we can clean it. We can clean the data. And that's just to have them rate the, their overall impression of the information. Question 14 it gets back to what are people willing to, at this juncture, now that they've got their reassessment and an estimate of what their projected taxes, property taxes could be, let's revisit what people are willing to support for the school building's needs. So question 14 is a repeat of question 16 in the 2023 survey. Again, it gives us the opportunity to compare results and see where we, and see if there's been any movement. <clears throat> then there was uh, a couple of comments about um, do we present the financial impact as a percent of their total taxes, a monthly dollar amount? What do people prefer? So that's why I put question 15 in there. I mean, quite frankly, you can figure, you can do the math yourself and get at it either way, but. I, I think, um, we'll have we'll 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 Yeah, we're doing well. All right, we're doing yeah, well. Yeah. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> and then all of page four is, is the same page four that we had before, because we used a lot of these demographics and classification questions to make sure that we had a sample of respondents that reflect the population of Cape Elizabeth. So I think it's important to continue with this. It gets at um, how long are they around? How long have they been in Cape Elizabeth? Age, do they have kids in school? Do they have kids coming up to be in the schools? Uh, and their employment status, that's really important in Cape Elizabeth because we have a lot of retirees. Uh, and then income levels. And I know income is one of the most intrusive questions that we ask in marketing research, but it is also one of the most divisive questions in terms of getting at segments and so forth. So uh, you gotta have it. And then um, additional comments like we had before. And in, in 2023, we actually got quite a few additional comments. Um, so that's the survey in a nutshell. All right, thank you for covering all that, Bruce, and I appreciate everyone 
listening. And now we're going to open it up. So, did they all get it on Zoom? Did everyone? I believe everyone's on Zoom. Yes. Uh, I, we did hear that those of you who are further from the mic, it's hard to hear when you speak. So, okay. Oh, yes. Project. Who's projected? Yes, Bruce and Chris are loud and clear. Good. So, I know Penny, you wanted to talk about overall purpose. Um, which we talked about at the last meeting. Let's start there, and then we'll dive into the individual questions. And I'm not a survey formulator, so it. And thank you for walking through this, Bruce. But uh, there are, well, just a couple of things. Um, as we look at the uh, objective of the survey. Um, I think that your questions probably 10, 11, or 11, 12, 13, Chris, are attempting to get at this is um, understanding of our effectiveness of our communication. So I think that gets there. I didn't see anything uh, around um, understanding of need. And so when we walk through the survey, when we go through this in detail, I, I'd want to test that because uh, the primary objective is to determine which of the three building proposal concepts voters are in favor of and what adjustments. Um, and like I said, I think last week, what we learned is we also want to understand more about communication and our effectiveness as well as understanding that people have an understanding of the need. Um, so as I go through the research objectives at the bulleted items, I just have a couple questions for clarification. Bullet number two, I assume what this is saying is adjustments to the preferred options, not preferred proposal. Um, because that where are you? I'm sorry, will it too? Um, where are question, two? question two. Yeah. I'm on the objective of the oh, research. Sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. oh, I had to go back to the top to say, are we covering all of the bases that are in our objective? So then, um. Uh, this is where it gets into assess voters' propensity to support at least one. So this is where, as we go through this uh, survey, we may want to figure out how we get, get something in there that we truly understand, that they understand the need, and, um, or the issues or the challenges. And I think the materials that have been created for ads and things like that really are, are really starting to or really honing in on those things and I think somehow we need to represent that in here so um, and then I, I when you talk about in here the data will be used uh, or be needed I know I think I understand what you're going to use to uh, figure out those weightings but we didn't talk about that when we go through the survey but I just wanted to say I think there are two other elements under the objective and we need to make sure they're captured in here thank you Michael I agree um, make sure you speak up I agree 100 percent my the only thing I would the limited space, we're going to dive into some of the space issues, maybe, but in addition to the needs, it would also be interesting, if possible, to find out do they understand how those op how the various options address those needs. Exactly. So not exactly. just the needs, but you have a good sense of how option one, two, and three address them. Exactly. And so as we go through the survey, it's like I wanted to put this out there so we we do trade-offs relative to questions um, because there may be too many questions around uh, where did you read about us? Uh, and we can insert another question that gets at need. So I just wanted to throw that. So I yeah, a general comment um, and it plays into what Penny and Michael said would and as I was looking through the questions, I kept asking myself. 
how will we use this information and how will it inform us of what we need to do going forward? So that's where we'll see if, if the needs, you know, if they don't understand a need, it doesn't necessarily mean we don't include that need. It means we have to do a better job explaining that need. That's right. um, so, I, I, and with all of these, um, all of the questions, I was kind of thinking through that as I went through it. My one concern I have overall, and I think some of this is in the, the narrative pieces that we didn't cover. I think it's really important that we are clear this is a new project in a new committee. And there may be some people taking the survey that are into town that didn't take the prior survey. I mean, very likely will be some that didn't take the prior survey. So I think we need to assume the recipient knows nothing about our new work. And we want to be clear about that up front. And um, in, in that first opening paragraph, opening paragraph, um, and I almost think you know, including things like review the pamphlet directive, you know, right up front, these options are preliminary; they will change, like all of that, in in a concise way. But I think it's important to set the table. I don't know if we're including a separate cover letter with this or not, but I think both on the insert and on the survey itself, we've got to set the table for who we are, what has changed, what's new with our committee. Um, and then right, going right into the last bond, I think undermines that effort to say we're a new project. So I think that question, and I understand why you put it in there to weight the data, but I think that could also go down with the demographic data. So it's not the first thing they see because it's going to be will shift their mindset to the old project again. I think it needs to be toward the end. Yeah. I also think we should be asking additionally if they took the previous survey. I, I think I understand why you're breaking it up, but do you want to speak to the way you lay it out in terms of that oh. first? Uh, I, I actually, the referendum question could be in either place. I just, it just has to be answered. It can't get lost. If it gets lost, it gives us a lot of trouble. It's balancing. The waiting. Yeah, it's the most important. It shouldn't be entry into the game because what we're talking about is something uh, we want you to be thinking about options. Uh, so if you put it to the end, otherwise you're twisting people's thinking anyways. I think about how my brain works. It's like, okay, we're talking about this. So now I'm going to go through this and I'm going to be thinking about that. Yeah, I have no problem with okay. that. I have no problem with that. That's, can we get, thank you. Can we go back to Cindy's comments on the opening paragraph? Cindy talks about telling our story a little bit more about who SPAC is and that this is a new project. Are we in some consensus we should add some information about that? Well, definitely in the inserts. Definitely in the cover letter. And again, we have limited space, but if there's a way to include it in the opening paragraph. If somebody's never read a cover letter in their life, I would strongly. <laughs> I've never read a cover letter in my life. I strongly think it's. You should read this one, though, I recommend. <laughs> <laughs> I will read one cover letter. This it, is the one to read. I'm knowing no, myself. That's, that's a very fair point. That it yeah. should be here. It is. Now, to read it. As we as we go through this, think about it. Okay, so we move question one. So the information about reading the insert goes up a lot. Yeah, uh, a lot. It's a really, lot. It's pretty nice. And blind. I I kind of want to. My personal feeling, knowing how people take paper surveys, they may skip the top paragraph. So if you just bury that instruction in the stop top of that. That's easy for me to say. In the top paragraph, they don't get it. So I, I really strongly recommend the box saying before proceeding and being pretty directive about it, saying you've got to look at this insert before you answer these questions. I think it's pretty important. Okay. Can I say something about the intro? Make sure you project so. Yeah. Um, I think it's pretty simple to, uh, without, um, I don't want to complain about writing style, and I won't no, wordsmith, no. but you, you, you do use some unnecessary words that can tighten things up, which we can get, we can get the wordsmithing <laughs> later. 
Um, uh, but I think the intro, the first sentence needs to be the school building advisory committee. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, appreciates or something about would like you to take your, your time to complete this survey. I I think we say right up front who we are in that first okay. okay. I personally I wasn't so sensitive about the fact that you were so new. So this is this is good to know. Okay, cool. Okay. Then it, it, and I think we want something so people recognize this isn't the same one we sent in September. It might look like it because the header's the same it's the same one. But this is a new survey to reflect the work we've done since you last took our survey in September. So I don't know if there's a way to distinguish this so that they know, okay, we heard from you last year, we've done something different, we wanna see how we do it. Yeah, it's kind of the story point. we need to tell. I have been surprised by how many people have approached me to say, why are you sending another survey? Right. Yeah. It's important to get updated information. Yeah, yeah. People really genuinely are like, I already told you, which I think is, yeah. Well, we have this no, that's a fair point. How about the new SBAC, or did they have an SBAC before this? Or? It wasn't called SBAC, but there was a building committee. Although we're the same committee that took the last survey. Uh, we have new no anymore. Okay. We're not the same committee that had the last project. Exactly. We've aged quite a lot. Of <laughs> <laughs> Your kids are going to college. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more um, logistical thing. I'm with the first paragraph, and this is more process thing, but so it says every person currently registered to vote in Cape Elizabeth has been mailed a copy of the survey. The person to whom this mailing was addressed should complete this survey. So I have four voters in my household. Are there going to be four envelopes arriving in my household? I do, how, yes. How will you know? So we're going to be paying mailing for four, potentially more, per household? I think we should get to that okay. question later on okay. and make sure we figure out what's in the survey first and then okay. talk about okay. the process and how much it's going to cost and all that. Okay. So all right. Don't forget that question. Okay. If you don't mind. Can I jump in with a thought? <laughs> Hi. Can you hear me? Um, yeah. I, think, I think it could help to give this a title to differentiate that this is a new survey. We could call it SBAC three options survey or something like that to be really clear about what this is right at the top. Yeah. Thanks, Corinne. I want to workshop three options survey. Just before that becomes, sometimes people say something and then it's setting goals, but I think the three options survey really puts choosing between three options is the primary um, like goal of the survey. And if we were going to name it, I would rather it be something like, information about three options survey or I don't know or so okay. I'm, I'm gonna recommend at this point I want we to need a, options we need a small working group to help Bruce with the opening I think that makes sense rather than the 15 of us workshop this right now. Time so okay. I recommend that Bruce just takes a stab at it and we'll, we'll yeah. go over you know. Well I have to say if I can make a general comment here I don't know if I'm totally comfortable with that because I think I came into this meeting a little bit discouraged, feeling like we all gave you a lot of feedback at the last meeting, and it really feels like your guys' feedback created this survey, and the other concerns were not really reflected in it. So, an example. I mean, the example is like the whole survey. Well, I'm going to one example. <laughs> I think that there was clear at the other at the last meeting that like you guys really wanted a survey you tim and michael and larry really want a survey that says choosing between the three options and then sydney and i were concerned about that being a straw poll that's not like not like you guys just like the, that was a clear division of opinion there i mean we have a survey here that doesn't do any education about the needs at all that like drills in the only thing it drills into specifically is cost. We have one, two, three, four, five places where people can just kind of expound. We, we are wasting so much space letting people just write their own narratives about what they're thinking instead of using that space to try to put in questions to, to drill down and make sure people understand what they read. Um, even the questions that try to get to like measuring our success, in my opinion, 
I don't care if they've read anything that, I don't care if they know that they've read anything that we distributed. I want to know how much they know about the school building needs, whether or not they learned about it from something that the SBAC produced and distributed. I don't know. I just feel like this is, I feel like I'm not, like, I, I felt very frustrated and discouraged reading this. And so I'm, I'm kind of a little, little cautious. I'll say we should take a first what track are you trying at to measure? it. I don't understand the last one, especially. What are you trying to measure? I'm trying to measure how much the public understands about the needs and how much information they have gathered. Whether or not they know that it came from something the SBAC produced and distributed, that's information that will make people be like, well, did it, what did it come from the SBAC? What we want to know is if the information has percolated out there. Okay. So, can I, I, can I, can I say that? No, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I was just going to, to get this point, like, for example, one of the notes I made on the question that it was, um, you know, to what extent that you feel negative or positive about um, the building options. I had a note of, of more about, do you feel you know more now than you did in September 23 about the school building project? And then, and then there were, you know, some other, uh, like what information has been most valuable to you? What would you like to learn more about? More specific things. So then we can take action items because if we just see, oh, I don't feel good about what I saw or I haven't seen much, that still doesn't give us an action. I want to know the one to ten. What do you think? Like, how serious do you think the state of the schools are? Because somebody who writes one on that clearly needs to be educated. I want to know how much people actually know about the needs of the school. I don't care if they learned about it from me. I don't care if they learned about it from Facebook. I want to know what they know and whether or not what they know is accurate. So we had that question the first survey too, right? So, just process wise. I don't want us to ping pong all over the survey. We made some good points. So let's keep going. And I think we can find out where there are areas we can add questions, remove questions, adjust questions. Um, I've heard some interest in having a working group on the opening paragraph. Uh, Michael suggested we do it through a Google Doc, perhaps. So, I don't want us to get stuck on that. So. I, I agree with you on not getting stuck. I guess the only, and I, I don't mind walking through question by question, but I, I'm still not comfortable at a high level that we've got a survey that's meeting the goal we're saying. And if the survey itself, like by starting to just try to wordsmith the questions we have, I mean, can we get there from here? And that's my concern. I'm not sure. Yeah. But we've got to do we've got to yeah. dive into it. Penny. I here's my opinion about the process. We can, as we go through this, when we hit a question and we go, is this question really getting to what we need? Kate okay, goes, this is an unnecessary question because I think we need to insert something along these lines. But at least we're the, the, the framework we have, which is the survey, at least that's guiding us to go through and work through each of the items and saying question uh, two and three, um, uh, uh, three I might do in a different way. I, how is it going to get at this? I think we need to talk about what are we thinking people are going to put in these blank lines and determine if that's the type of data we want or if we need to frame it in a more discreet way in order to get the information that we want. And what's missing? And what's missing. So, are you getting to the point I wanted to make is that we're in some ways, I think it's excellent that Bruce has added all that opportunity for comment because that's exactly where people will address the specific issues. And the other thing, and, that, and then we'll get a bucket of people into various, into various cohorts based on the nature of what they write. And there's so much opportunity for open um, insights that, uh, that we can gather from all these questions. So I, you know, I was very pleasantly surprised. 
to see uh, that Bruce was suggesting um, all of that open-ended. And again, we're acting like this is a this this survey is being put in a vacuum, included in this mailer is going to be a lot of really good information. And so we we have to we have to get over at some point that there's a vote coming in November. People are going to have the information that they have. Um, but we're putting this in front of every single, putting rich information in front of every single voter, every single registered voter in town. If yeah. that's not enough, then that's on us. We have to get better. And we can learn, I, you know, from, we can learn about how well informed they feel based on that information, but they're not answering this in a vacuum. Yeah, if I could just build on that, I kind of went into this thinking about the insert. I actually thought that there's two purposes to this mailing that's going out. One is you're giving a tremendous amount of information to people who may not have ever read anything about this project because to go to the website, they've got to get the initiative themselves. They're not being forced. When you mail it to their house, they're forced to at least glance at the front cover. So asking a question like, do you feel like you learn, you know more now than before? <laughs> Unless they just didn't open the piece of mail and throw it in the trash, there's no way they, they can't know more. And you don't want to ask a leading question like that because people hate to say, I don't know something or no, you know what? I'm dumber than I was before. So what I tried to do, and I did, I did really go with the open end format because I think if people don't feel like they have enough information, that's what they'll say. You know, I could stand, I could, I could use a little more information about this or does the school really need to have two cafeterias? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping people will respond like that. Yes, you're still going to get a lot of people, be, and, and this is based on the response we got in summer of 2023. You're going to get a lot of people who go through each open end and they'll say it's too expensive, it's too expensive, it's too expensive. And that's just the reality of where we're at right now. So what I what I tried to do, and I may not have done it perfectly, I, I never do it perfectly, but I was trying to get those top line. Uh, impressions that people will have when they go to the referendum. Okay. I'm not trying to take us off track, but I just want to plant this so as we go yeah. as we go through. Um, when I think about the materials that will be inserted, and I and I think about what has been put in the Cape Courier for apps. And I think about what um, uh, Michael put together with this press release that has some some titles here, which get, gets into enhancing safety and security, gets into improving vehicular blah, 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 gets into modernizing classrooms. If, if we take, and I counted on this, like, 12 of them. I didn't want to do 13 because I don't like that number. So I think it's 12 of them. And if there's a space in here where we could put all those 12 and put a scale and ask people to rate them, like, do you feel that vehicular track? And they can say it's a two. I, you know, I don't care. Um, do they, um, uh, uh, the whole thing around uh, providing separate cafeterias. You've got it, and then you've got this scale, and they go, yes, that's important, that's a seven. That starts to tell me that, number one, they read the materials. Number two, they might have been following what we've done all along, and uh, that we get a feel for how people are feeling on each of these elements. And then you can even add a Oh, there. What did we miss? Four. Can you clarify? Are you saying they were great? They were great at how important they think it is. You just didn't touch the side of the How important it is to them. How important they feel it is to the solutions. Yeah. Yeah. Corinne, um, Corinne, your hands up. I don't want to miss you. I yeah, you thank want you. Um, I was going to say exactly what Penny just said. I I think you know. I know. 
for each option that we're addressing, I like the overall rate from one to 10. I like that we're giving them a chance to write in their own thoughts, but I think there needs to be a third question for each that, like Penny said, you know, we, we had this in our last survey, which was basically a grid of needs um, and then rate one through 10, how important it is or how much it matters to you or whatever it is. But I think that that's a really important tool for us to see what people understand and what people value. And like Caitlin said, I would rather ask that and give up questions that are like, how are we doing, <laughs> whatever, because I think this will tell us how we're doing more than asking people that, you know, it's more valuable. Thank Michael. you. Thanks, Chris. I also agree. That said, you know, I think there was some discomfort with the survey because I think there's a chance um, you know, certain answers are going to come back and we're not going to personally agree with those. And I think that's totally fine. But in, in this case, it could be, you know, I'll make up an example. I think having two lunchrooms is very important. Um, but that could come back as a very low priority from the public. We need to know that. Right. And I just want to, I think it's great that you suggested that. So. Well, I, I also, because I love these questions, and I, I probably get a lot of emails around saying I love these questions, but um, I love the question that asks me to rate an, uh, my impressions sure. of the options. And impression is going to be my impression is it's too costly. My impression is it doesn't go far enough. My impression is, is that you guys have done some amazing work and uh, you deserve a raise, you know, things like that. Um, <laughs> I, I can multiply 10 times zero and it always has the same answer. Um, and so what I want is still that open-ended part. So your impression, so your impression, then your answer to number three is your impression. It's telling you this does not go far <laughs> enough. You need to have, uh, it doesn't have a new uh, con code with it. I mean, I want to know those things, but I also want them to rate some very discreet things as to how important they are. Caitlin and Cindy. I would say, I know I like uh, kind of reference the open ended question negatively in the beginning. A lot of that had to do with honestly my fears of just being really expensive because uh, these those questions do they take, I just assumed, I made an assumption that they are a lot more costly to deal with because you have to read them all and collate them are all. They more expensive. Open ends are more expensive than a rating scale. Yeah. Um, and not necessarily that I'm opposed to having that information. I do think that. What Penny said, I think that's a really good idea. And I think it gets to the point, I use myself as um, the version of me before I got, I don't know, turned into an adult, read literally nothing. I pay attention to literally nothing. At work, I don't pay attention to an email until like somebody who is in charge of me says, hey, you have to do that mandatory training. Everything else is noise. I It's so hard. So I try to think, what 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 gets someone like me to actually read something? To, because it's hard to get somebody like me to actually read something. You. Right. It's it's touch your taxes. taxes. I hope, it. I hope it. everyone will read it. But you can't actually hope that everybody will read it. But if you have questions in there, like Penny's saying, that force you to say, if you're asking the question, how do you like rate the cafeteria, maybe that forces you to go look at the insert more closely, to look at what it says about the cafeteria, it actually like, because that will, if I'm taking a survey and it asks me a question that I don't know the answer to, but it came with a piece of paper that's gonna give me the answer, that will make me read it, because I have, I have been prompted in that way. And so I don't think that's necessarily a leading question, but I do think that questions that reference the handout in a way that kind of prompt people to read it, uh, not necessarily prompt them to have a specific opinion about what they're reading, but prompt them to be like, you can't really answer this question unless you, because I could read that box at 25 and be like, whatever, and just keep going <laughs> and, and fill it out until I got to something that I literally wasn't sure. I'm not saying that this was a good quality, but I do feel like there are more people like this than people think that really are hard to get to, to 
to actively learn. People that are also busy and to read a lot, yeah. it's like boom, 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 boom. But mm -hmm. you're right, trigger on practice. Cindy. Yeah, uh, going back to Penny's idea, which I think is great, take the, you know, list the 12 items. We had, and this is where I was going to when last week I mentioned, we've got an opportunity to me measure progress on certain things. We had question seven in the last survey, importance of building features that we rated. So if we used that same question, because I think it's still pretty much in alignment with what we're say it again, doing. Sometimes you talk with it back. Sorry, importance of building features was question okay, seven yeah, yeah, yeah. That's in fun. the last survey. Yeah. So, you know, to Bruce's point, if you phrase it the way you did the last time, you can start to tell your movement from last time. So, and, and maybe we can do it in a way that I don't know, translates to what we have now. Because I think it's still, like these are still the needs we have now. A lot of this- I it, think it, it should mirror, mirror the we handout. Have it. Yes. yes. We're, we're giving them a handout that has information about specific things. We'll be yeah. asking them questions about the handout. So my only question, and then I go back to Bruce, does, will that give us the data we need to measure our progress of love against last time? Or do we, you know, I, that that's the, I just wouldn't want to. But is the project the same as last time? Yeah, it's more that's true. To, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think they're pretty much the same categories. We just say it differently. I'm only one to say something on Bruce. You're right. And Caitlin kind of said what I was thinking. Something that Lisa and I have been talking about is that, you know, we have these ads that we've been putting out there. It's important to have consistent messaging. And so right. we that's utilize that. that information and that you know those graphics Bruce. in this case and then from the survey. Yeah so it sounds like it sounds like you've enhanced and refined some of the needs that we rated in 2023 yeah. which which should have happened because you got the input back. So I don't think I mean with all due respect I don't think we should use the exact same question but I think we should use a similar question and the way you can measure that has there been any progress or not is if you go back to the data from Q7 2023, we only have one of those features that got as high a percentage of important votes as 75%. So if you then, if you if we put 12 new ones in and they're all up in the 70% range important or above, that tells me that you got your message across. So there's there's different ways of, of, of understanding if you've had if you've made progress with your communications other than just directly asking the question. Right. So I, and, and, and as we go through, this is this is very helpful because as we go through this, I'm looking at the questionnaire. Now with the paper survey, you're sort of constrained. Well, you're not sort of constrained, you are constrained <laughs> by the real estate. But as we go through this, I can see ways where we can adjust this to fit some of those questions and, and 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 I agree that that the importance should follow what the pamphlet says because then again that really emphasizes the dual purpose of the mailing. And I didn't suggest that the um when I have my list of 12 that it should be under each of the Oh, no, 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 okay, no, no, no. I only wanted it in one place. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, that's way, that's, that's, <laughs> that's too hefty a jar. People would look at that and say, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it appears we have at least general consensus on including that sort of question on needs, building needs, and important for the public. Michael. If we have consensus there, then I have one question. I don't know if it's. Um, I'm looking at uh, question eight, and we're asking to select one response. I understand that, but what's the rationale for not letting someone select multiple? Um, we have that same question. Well, theoretically, Talk to. I'm trying to use that question for people to really think through the reasons why they support one option or the other, and they may mention something about, they may mention something regarding option one, a different thing regarding option two, and I'm trying in question eight to force people to say, what is the hierarchy? What is the thing that's really driving you? Yeah, I think I wanna see two. Well, right. yeah, I mean, people would be willing to vote for more than one, they would yeah. mark it. But, but remember, you have a reading of each of them, so that's true too. But well, those are impression based. That's fine. That's, so, that's, that's okay. So we've got them. 
It is my impression. Okay. Now, now we we want you to say of all those, what would you, uh, what would you most likely select, and why? Um, why? I, I thought about this this morning. I go. I almost think about ranked choice voting. Um, that I go is first, second, third. Do you know? I think well, the difference is is that if because this is going to be kind of a struggle, and if it's going to be a struggle, somebody might say I prefer option three, and still be a person who could vote for option two. And we have we have by by forcing them to pick one, you're saying. We're going to put that person into an option three bucket, and we don't really want to know what they, which of the options they would vote for. Well, what even Michael, I think, really wants to know is which options they might vote for in November, which is not necessarily. What do you mean, even Michael? <laughs> well, I, know that. I, don't know. I think what you want to know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't even talk to Bruce all week. No, nothing to do with all I didn't mean that in an incisive way. I think that what you want, I was I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this. Your biggest nightmare, I didn't mean that negatively, truly. I think that your your worst case scenario is that we do nothing. That's your worst case well, that's scenario. Everyone's exactly. Um I don't know. I go back and forth, frankly. My worst case scenario goes back and forth between we do nothing or we do something that, that sets a, a repeat of this in 10 or 15 years. I genuinely go back and forth between between which of those is the worst. But I will say, if the worst case scenario is we do nothing, I, I understand that. So you do not want to support an option that's not going to get passed. I get it. So what we really want, though, is to know what could pass in November. And that is not necessarily asking people which one of these things that they vote for today. It's asking which of them they might vote to support in November, and they could vote to support multiple options in November. But, but you're getting that information in each of the individual ratings. You're not, though. You're just yes, asking you them how much you they are. like. You are getting that information. I'm talk one at a time. Or... Yeah. Sorry. I get it. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bruce. You're getting that information in in uh, in the individual ratings of the options, and what you want to do is force them to make a decision, so that they can then articulate what is at the top of the list. And so you use the t the, the three ratings as sort of the foundation. But so then these are the things that you've got to really include. Yeah. It's again, I can't, I, I don't mean to sound. The list. We care what oh, absolutely. Have. Because you've got, if you've got 12 importance, you can't do 12 things well. So it, it, it gives you a hierarchy of what to focus on. This is so, no. so a couple of comments. So I'm going to, I'm going to quote Caitlin from the last meeting. We don't want the survey to tell us what will be successful in November. We want it to tell us what we need to do to be successful in November. And I fear that ranking choices one, two, three gives perception of a winner. Um, yeah. And information, I mean, one of the things is these options, whatever option we end up in with November, is not going to be one of these three. It's going to be Mm -hmm. something entirely different. So I would hate to leave, you know, everybody says, okay, we want option two. And, and then what comes out of this is looks nothing like option one, two, or three. And then they're, well, we voted for two. So I think getting, like you, to your point, Bruce, yeah, we're going to get 12 things that are all important. Then it's our job as a committee to say, okay, of those 12, we know, you know, we know we need um, a larger stage because we have a hundred band students and they don't fit in our stage. But, um, you know, even though the community said, um, you know, they want this big auditorium, that's cost prohibitive and uh, ultimately it doesn't benefit, you know, the delivery of education. So we're going to use our knowledge as a committee and our knowledge of the needs and deep, this at a much deeper level than, you know, most of the public to then prioritize the things 
within what the community is delivering. So there has to be a point where those of us with expertise in the project and all of the research and all of the information we've gathered can apply that expertise and not, we, we want feedback from the community. We don't want, you know, but we still need to apply our knowledge and expertise to determine the final answer. Can I Bruce and then Penny, I think you need to talk. So I kind of view it as the open ends for the individuals will get, these are the nice to have things because they have all these options that they can respond to. And then the response to question nine, well, this is the must have. And so I, that's how I see a distinction between the two. Penny? Now I have three questions, but um, <laughs> what I was going to say is that if I if I listen to the logic um, and I get to um, question eight and nine, so what that when somebody says why I selected option three and they list a couple of reasons why, or they list something that's totally outside of uh, any of the parameters we put there, um, that tells us what is most important to people. So my question becomes, if we are doing a list of um, what, the needs, what the needs are, if we're doing that, we're having them rank them, is it the combination of the three options and their ranking of the needs going to give us the same answer because we will understand their uh, their priorities? Or are we anticipating that we're going to get something different than those you set can of can needs? Can you give an example? Like if you select the people who majority select option A, have this set of priorities, people who select option two have this set of priorities, ranked high, people who select option right. three have these priorities. Right. Maybe they're the same, maybe they're different. Okay. I think that's what you're thinking. Yeah, because I've already got the data. I think what you're I think what you're saying is if people have these list of priorities, then that indicates to SPAC what solution could meet those priorities without potentially putting the solution as options. And does it negate the need for question eight and nine? Yeah, that's, that's, that's my point. general question. I think eight is the-, the I know where it is. So, I'm, so, so, I'm just saying, I'm only saying okay. we already have the data. If we have the data, I'm not opposed to eight and nine. I'm just saying, is it redundant? So okay. Bruce, and then we'll go to Larry. I know you're waiting online. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. So first of all, I, I have no intention of labeling these option one, two, and three. I think I said that up front. Yeah, we need to do that. Well, we, we have, need different. We're going to, but that's neither here nor there right now. Right now, they're one, two, and three. So. Well, that, that those are just placeholders. But anyways, um, so what I'm trying to do with this survey is try to exclude any chance of getting uh, what I call kind of muddled results where you don't have a clear winner. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, so if you look at, at question seven, we actually did have a clear winner. We had one out of the 12. But the other stuff is sort of up for grabs. We had three that kind of surfaced a little bit more, but not with, not with a very big majority. I mean, we had meet current safety and security standards. 75% of respondents said that was important. That was that. So we all walked away from that saying, okay, well, whatever, you've got to include that. But still, it's only 75%. We still have 20% who are neutral. Um, so I know it's, it, it, it seems like it's a lot of effort. It's trying to get at not having a clear direction coming out of this because you, you, you don't have time to do another survey. Larry, so, and then Kate, that, that, that was my intention. <laughs> Whether it worked. Go ahead, Larry. Good morning. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, I, 
uh, just to preface this, I think Bruce made really one of the most critical points that we discussed at the previous meeting, and that is that this um, mailing is a twofer. We are getting out the information on the on the need and the whys, the whys for this project. And this is by far, in a way, the best mechanism and, and opportunity we have to get that information in the hands to, of every uh, citizen who's registered to vote. And we have to trust the fact that we've done a lot of work here and we've identified those needs, we'll explain them well in the insert, and we can only do so much um, to bring voters to read the material and form an opinion. Many may only take a quick look at it. That's their choice. And there may be other reasons by which they'll decide how to vote. But this is really a tremendous opportunity and we have to have some trust in the fact that we can deliver this information. And uh, I think, as I said, it should go to all registered voters and that will give everyone an opportunity to respond. And with respect to this issue regarding question eight, I think Bruce has constructed a very good means by which we can get information on each of the options that will help identify the issues that people have concerns about, pro and con, and that we, uh, we need to have a ranking of some sort for these three options. Um, and we will get the details on those preferences based on the questions that preface number eight. So I think we should trust in Bruce's um, recommendation here, um, since he's our expert, and uh, I, I would trust that he's constructed this in a way that will give us a lot of information that we need that won't be muddled or unclear or uncertain. I think this is the best, best path uh, to do this. Um, and I think this is an essential question. And that's that's uh, what I have to say on that particular issue. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Caitlin? Yeah, David, I think that's it. Uh, um, oh, go ahead, please. Uh, so I think that what you just said in your last comment really gets to the heart of, the, you, Bruce. Yes, okay. of our problem here. <laughs> <laughs> because I think for two, just two points. First, I think it's a flawed comparison to talk about what people rated in, in the fall to rating these three options. What they rated in the fall, that like safety and security, those things, those were like, I can't remember how many of them there were, but those were like 10 elements that were going to inform what went into the options. So we took a little bit of safety and security, we took cafeteria, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These options are not comparable. We can't take a little bit of option B and take a little bit of option E. I mean, maybe a little bit, but there's a lot less of being able to say that we, like, these are not, these are not three qualities with which we can weave together the way that ranking was like, how are we going to create these options? And, and having a gradient of opinion on them was important because we could, you can go really like gung ho on some and scale back on others. Like there was value in knowing how much people prioritized each one. That same ranking for options is is, is, is like significantly less valuable because of how they work together. And I guess when you say you don't want it to be money, I like feel the opposite. I do want it to be money because what we we want, an, we want a direction that people are leaning. We don't want people to think, I made my choice and then see something different in November. What we want is people to tell us, well, these are the ones that I could support. We're looking for the highest common denominator, not, not a direction. Our committee's work is to pick a direction. We, we, we want an impression of what most people will support and maybe they will support more than one option. I guess, I don't think we do want clear direction. I think we want people to understand that everything is still in process, that we're still working, that things are still being refined. I, I, so I think that gets to the heart of it. I think that, the, but I don't know if we can fix that. That's at the heart of what we're so, arguing about. Yeah, you know, Bruce is gonna speak well, in your name. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, please. So, 
I wasn't saying that we use these exact same things. I would use what Penny's talking about because I hope that you took these things and, and did create new oh, maybe I messages. And all I said about the comparison was in 2023, you only had one that got as many as 75% important ratings. And so what I would do is the 12, because I agree with Penny, we don't want to go with 13. I hate that number. <laughs> I, um, I misunderstood. Like, I then you heard. take a look at those 12, and did they, generally speaking, flow more towards important ratings than what we got in 2023? That That's the comparison. I think I misunderstood what you said okay. about that. Sorry. David, no, I'm all good. Yeah. Cindy, sorry. So, um, a couple things. And kind of going back to Caitlin's point, and I think this is where we've got to sort of just a disagreement yeah. between some of the committee members is like in a marketing survey I can see it's like choosing a laundry soap it's like I I you know it's like I want to know you know do you want one that smells pretty and removes stains and you know rate your laundry soap when you choose a laundry soap versus do you use you know tie or bean or all and I think we want to we want the qualities and the features but we don't necessarily want we and then we need to figure out it's our job to figure out what fits that tie gain all whatever you know so that's kind of how i'm looking at this and i think um you know we're we're not doing market research on three projects because we're trying to figure out what the project is we're trying to figure out what the product is so that's where i that's where i'm struggling with this and then if we should go forward with question eight and looking at the responses. And we've got responses. We've got one, two, three, none of the above, don't know right now or prefer not to respond. So if the committee does decide to go forward with that, I think we need to di differentiate on the none to tell us to differentiate between do nothing and do something different. Because there's going to be people that say none of these because I don't want to do anything or I want to spend way much less or whatever the reason is. But there are also going to be people that say um, you should be doing something else. You should be building a new elementary school. You right. should be building a new high school and not even looking at the elementary or middle school, whatever it is. To that point, Cindy, if, if somebody answers, if somebody answers none of the options. And then the irrationale is because we think the options right. you are offering yeah. do not solve X, Y, Z problems. Right. We then have a key piece of information that says, can we integrate that into what we're offering? Or is that something that we had taken off the list anyway? And we need to explain to people why, um, why we are building two gymnasiums or something yeah. like that. Go ahead, Bruce. Um, yeah, so as you look at eight and nine, nine is the more important question than eight. Eight is to get people in the frame of mind so that they think of all the things that I've seen in the pamphlet and all the other things, what are the top things? So you, 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 you just can't you just can't take it for granted that people will get there without you forcing them to do so. So Bruce, we're in a, in a bit of a pickle. Yeah. Um, we're hearing some committee members that are strong advocates of selecting options. We're hearing others with real concerns of the message that sends to the public that hey, we pick that, that should be the one, even though we're gonna have you know, a lot more work to do, a lot more design right. to do. Um, it, but I don't know if they want to vote yet. I think we got to talk through this because we need we need to gain comfort. Forward. We need to gain comfort with this. I would, and then Michael, I think you yeah. want to talk. Just because I know I'm like the annoying person beating the dead horse here. I I mean I feel like allowing people to pick multiple responses would get me to come around. At least I'm not happy. I wouldn't really be thrilled, but I would be okay with it. Michael, did you want to say something? Well, um, if there's a vote, who's voting? Everyone that's attending? It, 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 would, have to the committee. it would be the committee members. 
So, but I'm hoping we can avoid that and actually talk through this together and reach some consensus. Tim, so I've been listening a lot today because <clears throat> I've been criticized for being talking too much. So I'm going to try to encapsulate what I, I'm feeling. We really do need this survey to give us guidance. Whether it's muddy or clear, uh, we need some guidance. Uh, the biggest thing we've got to be able to come forward with a, as a group, as a committee, as a whole, is when it's when our final option is that we select in a month or so, we've got to all get behind it. And, and, and one, of the, one of the concerns I have is it, it, it's gotten pretty divisive. Mm -hmm. uh, just moving from seven to three, um, you know, this whole conversation about needs and people not understanding needs. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure after, after a year of this committee's work being done, how we feel that the community doesn't understand the needs. Uh, I, think they, I think they do, and we're gonna to continue to work on it, educating them on what the needs are. All three of our options that we have now that are being considered deal with the biggest priorities that we heard, safety and security, they're all being dealt with. New cafeterias, new lunchroom, they're all, all the options are dealing with the, the highest priorities that we got feedback from the community. Uh, but we're gonna really, we're gonna really need to try to utilize this survey and the responses to get behind an, an option that we can actually have success with. And, and we gotta cut down on, I think, the divisiveness between one option and another. And in the end, the option we end up with is gonna be a little bit of all of them, I would, I would guess. Um, but to move forward without getting some kind of clear guidance from the community, uh, when at the same time we're the, the write-up that Michael did that Kenny referred to earlier, there's told her, it, it deals with all the options that are in our app. I mean, I mean it's <clears throat> Michael didn't come out of that, up with that out of the blue. Each one of his write-ups deals with what we're putting in uh, the courier, what we're putting in the ads. Uh, we're going to continue to educate as we move along, but um, I, I think uh, all the options we have right now are good options for the community to be considering, and we do need to get out of this somehow, <clears throat> which one we can get, uh, you know, because the people that are not going to be in favor of anything, we're probably not going to be able to move them anyway. The, the middle of the, the group of citizens that are going to hopefully we, we get enough of them to vote for our option is the group we really need to continue to try to move along. So uh, I do I do I do look forward to this giving us some additional guidance. Bruce, can you give us your thoughts on because it's possible someone could select more than one option. Is, is that a conceivable selection or if that was included, what would that do? Because I hear Caitlin gains comfort from that. Right. I I kind of feel like we we get that anyways with the three individual ratings. So from a research standpoint, I think it's really important to have people do the trade-off and say this is this comes closest to what I'm willing to support. I think. If you get if you get ratings into let's say somebody rates option one an eight somebody rates option two an eight somebody rates options three and eight question eight will tell us then which of those three you, you you're going to support all three of them but which one really surfaces for you? But I don't think it cares much about that. Who's me? I don't know. I don't, if we want to know what people will vote for in the fall, then that person, if there's a person who votes one as a seven and two as a nine and three as a six, okay, they like two the most, but they'll vote for all three. I don't care which one they like the most. I care that that's the person who will vote for all three. But we also care, that's the lens through which we view the needs, how they understand the needs, and that's the lens through which we move things around. Right, right. But so if we don't ask that question, we have no lens on which to determine which needs 
need to be moved into E or B or whatever. Right? That's the foundational question that goes on top of everything else we look at. Okay, so we're getting that from their seven, their nine, and their eight. What we're getting from eight theoretically is when when the push comes to shove, would you vote yes? And I think we we want to know if they would vote yes for multiple items. I don't I don't want to anchor somebody into one choice. But we we are we will know that. We will know that. How do we not know that? Sorry, it's I, well, what if they ranked one of five, but they wouldn't vote for it? We don't know if somebody ranks something of five, maybe they wouldn't vote for it. But if they have an option to say, grudgingly, I would vote for uh, the five because I think whatever, that, that I don't want nothing to happen. We really want to know what that's what it gets to, right? What people would vote yes for. It's not, it's not, I don't care which one they like that. We didn't get that from the ratings. We want to know what they're going to vote for. David, um, just a quick note I've been really successful through my whole career. And what I did, I surrounded my people, myself with experts. And we're hearing from an expert right here, which I think we got our bonus rep. Um, architect, they're all experts. We hired them for being experts. You've got all the experience, and what you're telling us, I, I go with. So, so with respect, he's telling us what is best for research, mm -hmm. not what is best necessarily for so is it this a successful that? referendum. We're not really, I understand what you're saying in the context of gaining an accurate research perspective, but this isn't just research. Like our architects said the opposite at the last meeting. We still got up and said, if you take a straw poll, you gotta go with a straw poll. Mm -hmm. So I feel like our experts are kind of not totally in agreement on this. But he's the expert in service. But not in getting our referendum passed. So um Anyone online uh, on the committee, Larry, Corinne, anything else you want to add about the question on number eight? Yes, I, I would. I look, I, I think allowing um, the on question eight multiple options just confounds and confuses the information that that question and particularly nine produces. As Bruce described, he set up a hierarchy here. We get information on each of the options. We, we ask to find what their option preference is. You know, people aren't going to have a hard in certain um, positions and others will. And it's the best way to get insight into what people are thinking. There's a lot of information that will come out of this sequence. And I think we ought to just simply go with it as it's drafted. Thanks, Larry. Corinne? Anything to add? Uh, no, I think, yeah, thank you. I'm fine. Well, I don't have a question. So I don't necessarily think it's specifically that drafted if, if we have the opportunity, Bruce, you think we have the opportunity to have a scale on the, um, the various needs. Yeah, I think we, we can do that. And where would that go? Well, I think Larry was talking about question eight. Oh, eight, yes. Yeah. Yeah. With respect to eight, I agree. Besides renaming the option, yes. we need to do that. And eight, nine, I agree with Larry. Uh, I'd like Danny, to where are you at? Sorry. What? Question eight. I'm going to go to each of you just to get a sense of where we are. Um, I, can, I can support it. Thank you, David. You support this. Cindy? I think if we move forward with eight, we need to be very, very clear that the choices that they are looking at, the options they are looking at, are not going likely not to look at, look like what they vote for. Can I ask you a question about that? Does this paragraph do that for you? Or does it need strengthening or? Just put it in capital letters. I think I would say, um, I would almost say we'll look a bit different. Um, so here. But yeah, just be more clear about that. And I think we can also accomplish that on the insert when we talk about the insert. Um, I just don't want to set people up um, 
similar to what happened with our, our um, feedback mechanism, mm -hmm. where they felt like they made a choice that was in board. And I'm really worried about that happening. Right, thank you, Tim. Yeah, I think, from, I think we've got to learn from that experience. I mean, is, uh, clearly, uh, not, I've only been on this committee in a big way since November, but um, when, we, when we look at it all, uh, the seven options, uh, I never really felt from the feedback I was getting from this committee that A was ever really an option. It was always to talk to me like it was a data point. I never felt like G was really an option. I felt like it was more of a data point, a master plan. And I think, and we've been moving forward and communicating that more. I think when we ended up voting a couple of those off, off uh, I, I never really gave it enough time to communicate why I was doing that. But I think, and I think out of that whole experience of not giving them enough feedback on those, how they communicated, how they felt about G and taken up, has created a lot of this. All of a sudden, we have a, a sense that the community, the people don't really understand the needs. And so I don't, I don't want to make that mistake moving forward. So when we, when we go from this uh, three options to one option, I want to make sure that, because I'm, I'm as equally concerned about the people that are not going to support it regardless, as I am now concerned about if we don't do enough, we're not going to get support. So, and then ultimately we might lose on both ends of the thing. So, um, but long story short, I didn't mean, and now I'm talking to get too much, Chris, but uh, I would, I, I do think it's critical that we, we keep this as, uh, as clear as we can. I, I do think in the explanation on eight, we pretty much lay it out pretty clearly that the, Final option we look at is going to be different than inter anything we see today. It'd be a little bit of all of them, I think. Um, but I'd be in favor of moving forward with eight and something pretty similar to what I will say. Thank you. Michael. <clears throat> I'd like to um, move quickly as possible to the next piece, which is as important as the survey, which is the information we're going to be sharing. I'd just like to see it if possible with updated drafts. That includes the, the various needs in the, the ranking of preference across the, uh, the various needs. Um, the support of eight and nine, uh, the way they are drafted. Um, Thanks, Michael. Current, um, I know I asked you for feedback, but are you supportive of eight? Um, or do you I. I feel kind of the same way as David, where, you know, in my career, I'm always leaning on people who know more about things than I do. Um, and so it's hard for me to have a very strong opinion about uh, the way that we word this or if we rank it or not. I, I feel a lot better about asking this question because we're getting more feedback about each option. Um, yeah, so I guess I don't really have a strong opinion. And as long as we feel comfortable with the verbiage we're saying to be very clear that this is a point in time, um, things are gonna change. We're just hoping to take a temperature. Yeah, the, I'll, I'll feel comfortable. Thanks. Thanks, Corinne. Kate? Uh, obviously, I don't support it as written. Um, I guess I'd also just like to say, Feels kind of frustrating to have this be uh, a thing of great controversy that's come up and to have so little attempts to try to reach a compromise position. Thank you. Going back to the wording, we, might, we can see something like conceptual option or concepts, concept, concepts, because option is implying that you yeah. make this choice mm -hmm. and this is what it is. But if we call them concepts, that's that tells us it's unfinished. Is that consistent? Lisa, are you on? Stop. Yeah, I was going to see what Lisa thought on that. Because there's hardly language that you use. Lisa, did you hear that comment? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I'm having a hard time hearing the question. So the question is adding language in number eight that says these are conceptual options or conceptual designs to make clear that they're not static. Is that the sort of language yeah. you would use? 
Yep, we would refer to them as concept designs or conceptual designs. Thank you, Ski and I, for our materials. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, yeah, we just talked about options. Conceptual design is fine. It's, fine. it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you, everyone, for leaning into that conversation. Chris, Go ahead, I Penny. I just want to um, caution us all. Um, uh, I've heard a lot of terms lately of uh, could be dramatically different or significantly different. I don't, I don't want people to feel that uh, what they're ranking here and what they're working on, uh, um, I think we can say they'll be tweaked or warped or something along those lines, but I don't want people to think that, okay, now we've got it, now we're going way over here. I agree. Um, so they modified. Just, Modify, yeah. Yeah. Modify is a good word. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, I know we need to get to the insert. There's a few more questions to at least comment on. Uh, Bruce, you've had some questions about where are people are getting their information from. Has it been reviewed? I think there were some comments earlier that perhaps in this area we can review. I just got one. Yeah. I just got David. One. 1 on 11, where we found this information. There's a group out there that were, you know, they go home every night, they don't read all this, and there's, you know, there's a bunch of other people that just don't have time to. And I've got, I spoke to a, quite a few people, and that sign out there, you're, you're going to have a 20 some percent tax increase. It's most important. They come home from work and say, holy crap, we're going to raise my taxes 22%. So I really think that, I don't know if we'll get that group to answer this, but I think the science was very important. They were everywhere. That was the previous, the last yeah, previous yeah, yeah, yeah. But, they were everywhere. And people, when they're driving down the road, I mean, that's what they saw, 22%, 22%. <laughs> and, and we have that in the last survey. We know that this is about this, our work, and this project, okay. which is why we said take the signs off. Because, important to keep an eye for the fall. But, okay, yeah, my yes, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's not bad. It's good. It's good. Yeah. good to know. Can we go to question 10? Sure. Number one, only because I have uh, reading and comprehension issues. This yeah. is a very complicated question to me. And I also, I think I understand what it was trying to do, but I, I couldn't. From a comprehension perspective, I couldn't like wrap my head around it. Can this be please the game? So is there is it a different question or does it go away altogether and replace it with another question? I totally agree with you. I can like why can't we say please indicate the extent to which you feel informed about the proposals? And just that question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I don't I don't just positive or negative. You either feel informed or not informed. Well, it's kind of duplicate too, because you got make very negative, very positive down below, and you got it up in the wording as well. So you can at least take it out of one place or the other. It also or both, maybe. It also conflates like your opinion on the information with how much information you have, which are two fundamentally different questions. Right. So when I went over the questionnaire at the beginning, I admitted that this was a bit of a morphed question, but what I was trying to do was track it from the summer survey to see if there's been any movement on this. So I basically took the wording from question 3E and morphed it into this question. So I used the exact same language so we can actually compare the results and say, oh yeah, we have moved the needle. I think the so, two things we need are people feeling informed and where are they getting the information? Mm -hmm. And that will guide us through. I agree. And that would give us some room to cut some of these other mm -hmm. questions. Cindy. And the only other note I had on this one, if any, I'm going to my, how, what will we learn from the response? How will we use that? And at some point, I'd love to be able to ask the question, is working better or what information are you missing or something like that? And I don't know if that comes in with this question or. Um, uh, there's another one at question 13 as he notes, but I think I would love to, I would like to give the community an opportunity to give us some feedback on 
what can we do better? What information are you still looking for? Maybe may be an open ended question. Yeah. And, and consolidate 12 and 13 is an open ended question. We, yeah. did give, we did give direction, I think, but we wanted to know, we wanted that information of how well they felt they were informed. Yeah. So I think we asked, basically asked you to put that question in there. So yeah. but it's just a negative, positive, maybe we can get rid of that and just okay. Because I think there's there's how they feel, but that doesn't tell us what we need to do or what we can do about it. So I just I love results to give us actionable things that yeah. we can work on. Especially in the light and the fact that they're getting an immense amount of detailed information alongside, and if they still don't feel informed, then that's a major problem. So more about those people are. So Bruce, we're looking for some consolidation in that area. Yeah, and really. There's consolidation. And there's a lot more coming. There's a lot more pieces coming. So. All right, here we go. Um, we're into the tax question number 14 and 15. I think 15 is uh, not necessary because we should be displaying it all the way anyway. I agree. Yeah, I think there's probably agreement on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 15. Uh, and 14 was asked sorry. previously. Is that important to that? Bruce, I'm sorry. 14 was asked previously? Yes. Yes, and I think that question is important. I think it's important that it tracks with the actual cost implications. And if you're saying you support um, option one, but you support less than 5%, then this will work. There's a gap in knowledge there, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think I think now that the um, revaluation, the reassessment, sorry, well, whatever we call it, is out and more informed with the community, I think it's important to see what impact that's had. So to that point, I think we may want to include a question if if they are if they are comfortable knowing the reset or something like that, because that did come up as a huge issue last time. And the information's out, but do not people me. feel like they know it? Not everyone. I know and I know that not everyone feels they understand what it means. Right. Yeah. So I think having a question around their knowledge of their reassessment is important, especially since it came up as a big deal last time. And then and this sort of goes along with what Michael's saying. We're um, you know, we're talking about understanding the needs and, and we've clearly presented them with you know, the three concepts that don't, um, none of them are less than 5%. So, you know, do we give them options and none of them are more than 20%. So, but by putting those options in there, do, do we need to include those? I know we're doing it for tracking, but does that imply that those are still potential things we would go forward with if we put it in the survey? I would think there's a chance that one of the options could go above 20 Right, and then I also want to know if there are, regardless of what, whether you support, a lot of people will easily support more than 20. We should know who those people are. Right? If, if we want to track this back yeah, to 2023, we got to leave us in. Yeah. yeah. Corinne? Um, I think it could be nice as like an asterisk or something to this question if we point them back to the flyer and say like, see information on the flyer for average house what these percentages mean or something like that or just to give them a, an idea of how it might translate to dollars for their own taxes yeah it'd be good thing to also put on the questions we're adding in the beginning that reference the the, the needs on the flyer say see flyer so we've got tim and then i'm going to go to you larry and i know you're Thinking, Bruce. So Tim, we're we're looking as you refer to it as we we're, we're looking for some real estate to add some questions. Uh, we do we we need to take some questions off, do we? We, we have taken some off. So so I, we we took we're taking off uh, fifteen. I think that was a good idea from Caitlin. Is we're gonna we're just gonna show them both ways. That next one down there's some information about you. Is that something you need to put in there? Or is that something we can take out? And then the next question. How, uh, not the next question, 17, is that a question, how many months of the year on average do you currently, is that something that's critical? How many months of the year that they live? I mean, we have we have probably a lot of people live, but, you know, 
But I mean, that might be a question for real um, estate. A lot of people that don't live here year round are probably not going to be. A, it wasn't right. critical in the first. They're probably not going to be registered to vote here anyway. <laughs> you know. They got to they got to be residents to be able to. Before we carry on with that, I want to make sure there's any more questions or comments about the tax section. Larry had his hand up during that time. Larry, go ahead. Yep. Uh, thank you, Chris. Yes, uh, I believe that number 14 should be identical as it was in the uh, survey last year. And I think we're all in agreement on 15 that we, we can just drop that because we can present um, the percentage of total and monthly dollar in both ways. Um, and I think we ought to just go ahead and plan on that. Thank you. Um, so Tim was suggesting some reductions. Um, can, can I just go ahead, Bruce? Cindy, I wasn't quite understanding what you were saying about when you were talking about the tax question about the value of something. I was talking about the rebuild, the tax revaluation. Oh, well, how, we just wanted whether, to make sure we want okay. to have some sort of if question they, to see, to gauge if they understand what it is. I think the last time we just asked how much did the revaluation right. affect your decision, and that was a significant the uncertainty. Added. Uncertainty. So I'd like a follow up question, um, just to see if. If they understand their current tax valuation. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 I didn't get that the first time. Thank you. Bruce, these demographic questions are the same as last time. I just got one on the demographic. So I mean, let's go down to the on Scott Die Road, the retirement home, and also the one down further. There's a lot of people there. Go down Scott Die Road on the left. I don't think we, I mean, the only way they would have gotten it is if they. Uh, so if they went to the town website. I mean, we put, before we put paper surveys all over the town center here. And I know um, Debbie Lane- a lot of people there. But yeah. They vote. They do vote. Yeah. They do vote, but we're constrained as to how we can get surveys to people. Okay. I mean, the first survey we sent to property owners. There were people who- yeah. Voted that aren't owners. Right. So <laughs> this one we're trying to send to registered voters, okay. which is going to include all that group. It's going to do a better job including all that group. Okay. April, we might get some questions. So, any other final thoughts on any of the demographic section? Yes, Bruce or Cindy. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just saying, I think how many years you lived in Cape Elizabeth is good and it also helps us gauge how many people are in here since 22. Um, I kind of agree with Tim. I don't think that how many months a year do you live in Cape Elizabeth is as relevant. Um, and I think, you know, some of these, I guess I differ, Bruce, how many of these were really um, relevant to kind of waiting and checking our demographics last time and how many were less helpful. Well, we want to know about the people who spend four months in Florida and they can't still live. I mean, no, they can vote if they're only four months. And again, my question is, how is this helpful? How is this helpful information for us? Because I, I keep thinking the output. How would we use that? Right. One, one quick one. Um, that just going down. <clears throat> the next one down, 18. Do we need to have any age brackets? I mean, if we're just looking at saving a line somewhere, could we consolidate? Do we need as many, you know, 18 to 20 travelers? It, it, it aligns with the U.S. Census. So that in the previous survey. And then we want to going back to your question, how is this useful? Were you talking about all the demographic? No, I was talking about, well, in general, the how many months of year. I mean, I would, that's, that's kind of the lens. I looked through all of them, but I couldn't, the one about how many months per year, I, it was the one. I think we were all, I think we were ready to, we can move down, move down. Plus, there's a reason to keep it. Do you know if there's a reason to keep it? It's fine. I, you know, if you had it, it, it didn't really come up in the last survey as like a segment that no. they devoted yes or no. Larry, your hands up. That was my question. Was it a significant demographic segment in the last survey? Larry, do you have something in your hands up? It's not. Okay. So, Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's important to keep the header some information about you because it, it, it reemphasizes the fact that we're not going to track them down to their house. And I think we need to have that 
It's it's softened. pretty much standard stuff. Yeah, it's softened. Getting rid of 17 is fine with me. To really create real estate for another question, though, I'm going to probably reduce additional comments. If not, just get rid of it. At the very end, right? Yeah. Yes. That's the only way that I'm going to get enough real estate to add a question. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay, great. Right. The other ones, the, the other ones, the, the, the next one that I would take off would be the age of children. Yeah. Yeah. That would be yeah. the next one if we need more real estate. They have children or not in the schools? Is the I actually don't know if I would do that only because I have had heard some people be like, I'm not graduate. Well, yeah, I think it's general. Yeah. My kids about to graduate, so I don't care about schools anymore. Like, I don't know. That was kind of a. Yeah, I, I don't advocate. Point. I don't advocate getting rid of it. Yeah. I don't think it's the one that yeah. I would I don't advocate getting rid of it, but I think it's the lowest priority of the remaining classification question because you have 20 you know oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you got 20 okay yeah. Yeah, yeah so again i don't really advocate taking it out but if i had to get rid of another one other than the two that we just mentioned yeah. that would be the next one you're saying 19 not yeah. 20. get rid of 19 not 20. if we yeah. have 21 how important is that Really well, it was important because it identified retirees. Retirees. We'll miss the way people are there, whatever. Cool. Yeah. But then it didn't come up last time either. Okay, I think Bruce, we've given you a lot of feedback. <laughs> Appreciate you diving into this with us. Um, Cindy, did you have something else? Quick comment just in that demographic section at the end of moving that first question about how did you go well, to the oh, yes. one? Yep, yep. Yep, I got that. And we're going to, we add the question of, of, did you take the previous survey? I don't know what that question will do for us, honestly. Um, so an interesting note, though, is that uh, there were 7,309 registered voters in November 2022. And now there are 7,800 and something. So that's a, almost a 10% uptick in registered voters in Cape Elizabeth. I thought that was a number that was kind of interesting. It was worth that. All right. Oh, God, help us. <laughs> it is quarter past 10. Let the young people register to vote. Quarter past 10. Migration effects. It's quarter past 10. We've done a lot of good work, but we still have more work to go. Gracious, your hands up. <laughs> Yeah, I think if we get rid of the, is it 19 age of kids living in your household, let's just add to 20, like I have kids under the age of five who will be enrolled in the next few years or whatever, so we can grab that number. Yeah. Okay, thank you all very much. So we'll be coming back to this definitely next week, um, next Thursday. Um, I know we still have questions about costs and all that, but before we do that, I really want to give Emily a chance to talk about the insert. And my, when, my question is, both. 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 Is it, oh, what's the drop dead date? We need all the entire content of the mailer finished so that we can get it to printers and in the mail on time. Yes, sir. I know. <laughs> What's the gap between and what's the gap between when we get the first draft and that date? What's, what's that? What's the draft between when Karen gets us the first draft and that date? Well, my concern is that first draft. That draft has to align with what's in the mail. We can't have material changes to what's presented on April fourth. So what's going on in the mail? No, we need to know like when we're going to get home. I mean. If we want it out on April 4th, let's let's pretend we want it out in the out the door on April 4th. That's possible. On here, unless they have Monday, it's not April Fool's Day, really. On April 1st is when um they uh, send more materials to SBAC. That include costs. <laughs> it is supposed to in tax implications. Basically, if we had the final materials, everything ready to go April enough. first, <laughs> is it even conceivable to have it in process <laughs> for April fourth? Probably going to be like April fifth or April sixth. Okay, so if it's April sixth, 
then it's April 10th before pretty much everyone has it in their mailbox. And we give them seven days. Absolutely, yeah. And then three days for mail and 10 days, April 20th. Are we, can we put together a presentation in five days? We might not be the deep dive mm -hmm. yet, but we, we can, you know, we'll, we'll definitely have an idea of what our friends are about schedule and trying to figure yeah, out what yeah, is doable. So, yeah. so Michael, are you going, or will we have enough information for our meeting on April 25th, where we, the SBAC, is um, assessing that feedback and discussion of options? And that's the goal, right? We need to have as best possible information. So it doesn't need to be perfect. I don't think. I mean, that's a question for Bruce. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we could, again, it may not be the deep dive that, that this presentation was, but I think we should have an idea of what the trends are and what the high level stuff is that's coming out of it. And as long as we have, or here's the data, and we can start to um, um, analyze it at that meeting. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about today too, is like, what what's the output you know do um do we want to get the data and sort of the summary but the deep dive of the analysis maybe the committee digs into that a little more so it's um because we're a lot of the stuff is mapping back to the work we've done already as opposed to and review the passport yes and i know that we've moved dates around but is there that is it May first? We're supposed to go to one May second. May second. There's no way to make that May 9th. I don't think so. Lisa, is there any way for them to vote on May 9th instead of May second? Uh, we're having a really yeah, we're having a really hard time understanding people on the Zoom, and maybe it's just me. Um, I, I haven't been able to follow along what the question is pertaining to. Right now, Lisa, we're just talking about timing. When the survey is going out, Logistics. when we'll get it back, when will we have the data to analyze? And so the question is, will we have enough time, I think, to analyze the data by May 2nd to make a choice? And to we'll, inform our choice, I guess. And will moving to the night create any compression anywhere else in the plan. So I have to look at the yeah. I have to look at the overall schedule in order to comment on that. All right, so we do that. Can we look at that? Because I would feel a lot more confident because right now we have zero room for error right. in the logistics here. Um, I'm nervous about it. There's also the impact of it sounds like these will be in mailboxes by April 9th, 10th. Coming up to? Coming up to spring break, spring break. April leaves, so we need to make sure there's some time before then. That's I'm concerned about the short window to complete things. When, when is spring break? Let it be gone. Yeah. Uh, I don't It starts yeah, on the 12th. I am. It runs the next week. I'm really concerned about the short window and also from Caitlin's perspective. So she was talking about how she discards these. I'm really good at putting my mail in a pile and then looking at it at the end of the week. Um, I was really good at putting it in a pile. Yeah. That's, well, that too. <laughs> I sort the pile of the stuff I don't have to look at. But I mean, yeah. I'm so really good at looking for it online. The assumption that people are going to open this and do this the day they receive it is particularly if it's over spring break, when they may not even be home, um, is challenging to How do you have a sense of how quickly people, like the timing for responding, and I know they had a bigger window, <clears throat> but when did those first ones start coming in and then when does it ramp up with the mail survey? So it, it's tough with the last one, so they have love the web, but you'll start to get them trickling in. Some people do take care of things right away. So you'll start to get some trickling in, you know, about a week after the drop date. Uh, 
So that means, you know, the mail's gotten to the people, they've filled it out and they've gotten it back. And then a couple of days after that is when you see the surge. <clears throat> and then it goes down and they trickle in for a long time. And so is that surge, is that surge like 20% of your overall responses, 50%? Like how big is that surge compared to your overall response? Um, yeah, I'd say that's fair, 20%, 25%. I mean, each mailing is different because some are perceived more important than others. I'm kind of hoping this one is perceived as important. We can we can put like a little, I forget what you call it, like a little tagline on the outside sure. of the envelope. Uh, yeah. is an and to, to, to encourage people we need to open it. We need to, extremely time sensitive. We'll reply, we'll reply to we'll reply to request the yeah. I don't know if it's getting right. Can we really, if we can, our email box is on the screen, right? No, it's going to be before that. Okay. But just before that. Just before that. And maybe the question for you, Bruce, like, does the color would make, make a difference? Like if it was like yellow or something like that, just, I'm just asking. I know I get a piece of paper that's got one's put windows and it's a yellow piece of paper. I need that first. Yeah. You know, worst case. Yeah. But, you know, but, we're fine. But okay. hold on. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, we're, we're all talking. Yeah. No one here's that. Sorry. Yes, yeah. correct. No, I just asked about it. does a certain color get people's attention more than just a color. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll think about it. Yeah, think, think about that. Think about it. So, so let's go on record as saying that uh, unless there's something critical that we're impacting, that we want to do our meeting on May 9th. Let's just say it. I, I, 100% agree. Let's allow, <laughs> let's allow Lisa to analyze that. Um, and I, have I don't well. see anything in here, but I don't do this really, job. Yeah. It's yeah. design work. Yes, yeah. May 2nd. We can't yeah. decide that sure. here. So, something critical that we need to speak to, and I'm going to ask Lisa to chime in on this. We need to talk about the expectations for what is going into an insert and who is performing that work. So, I'm going to ask Lisa to speak to that. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, so I just I just want to reiterate: when multiple people talk, we can't hear anything online. Um, so it's it's been a real real struggle audio wise. Um, but um, I can speak to the insert. Our recommendation is that you utilize what you're putting out in the paper. Not everyone will have seen it. Um, have people working off the same information. And really, there's not going to be additional information that has been developed past the ad. Um, the timing is super tight, as we all know. We are literally going to have to make live updates directly after the meeting on Thursday night to be able to turn this around to the paper on Friday. Um, and my recommendation would be that you consider using this as or whatever you arrive at as the version of this as your insert, as well as any of the um, uh, uh, press releases that you have released. Um, and that way people have the same information. If there's additional information you're looking to have, we need to know exactly what it is. And then we're gonna have to speak to whether there'll be capacity to provide that within the schedule. Any of them, Michael? Um, I just want to say, and uh, maybe Chris can figure this out, as long as the courier knows what size you are looking for, you may be able to have till the end of the day, Monday or early Tuesday morning. That's correct. If, if we know the size, which will probably be a one page, then they, they will be flexible with us. Um, and I can do work with them on that. That would yeah. be amazing. Yeah, if I could, uh, on on Lisa's recommendation, I'd like to um, indicate my support for that. I think that's the very best solution. And I think we should have a consistent message, both in any printed advertising and, and the insert. And secondly, I just uh, suggest that on the outside mailing envelope uh, for the survey that we put um, immediate response requested immediate response requested. I think is not too pushy, it, it, but it shows urgency. It doesn't seem like it's over the top. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Michael, thanks, Aylin. The, um, 
the insert edge will be consistent or needs to be consistent with what goes in the courier, correct? Um, but the information that needs to be shared, in my opinion, the needs, so we, we need to, I don't think we can send a seven page document, but we need a summary of the needs, we need a summary of options one, two, three. Um, and for me, the most helpful part of the last meeting was seeing that matrix that you had started to develop where you have the, those exact needs and your option one, two, three, describing how they address or do not address said needs. And my strong hope is that we can include a version of that matrix in the in the mailer because that's the context. You know, cost is one thing. We need to include that. But like, what are we actually solving for here, based on the identified needs, and how does A, B, and C, or one, two, and three, actually address or not address uh, those things? You're needs. talking about the matrix with the dots. No, the no, I don't think no, this the pros, pros and cons. What's included? The one that we presented on like six yeah. slides last meeting. Like a, a quick blur describing, not not a dot or a or I actually don't find this super helpful when I actually can read what what are we doing in terms of efficiency upgrades in option E. Uh, that's helpful. Do you remember you built that last last week? That was super helpful. Sorry, go ahead. Bruce. Um, so whatever the different conceptual designs are called. Yes, we need to get we, them. They need to be what we're gonna use in the survey. Cause right now, the way this is set up, I would use option C minus, option E3, because people have got to be able to refer back immediately. So first of all, options gotta be changed to conceptual design if that's what we're gonna do. The concept. Yeah, what concept design, concept, whatever. Yeah. Whatever is going to be used on that is what we use in the survey, and it's yeah. got to be exact. Why it, it's got to be, I'm sorry, it's got to be romper room. I'm mean, this is telling you. Are we talking about keeping that? We don't want to go to one, two, three. We want to keep the same. Isn't E plus weird? No, no, we don't want to use those. Any because Why can't we just do like... I don't know, like you, any any ABC one two three is yeah. a ranking. What about like concept? I would do that. No, what or, we usually do yeah. is we come up with some funny name like that, right? So we say concept concept design or conceptual design pink, or conceptual right. design black, or well black has got yeah. some word on, but you know what I mean. Or you just do, and I know this sounds silly, but it's really important. We do conceptual design E J Q four. You know, just some you just make something up. Yeah. It seems confusing. Like, but you don't you can't use anything that's ordinal is the is the point. But like well, like but that's what I mean. Like concept, what are the beaches? Concept casino, concept uh Willard, concept yeah, something, yeah. yeah, something like that. That's local but not like uh has no has no positive or negative connotations whatsoever. Right, you can't use street names though, because then people will say, "Oh, you're going to put that building on my street." Yeah. I mean, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I think color, I think color, <laughs> shapes, remember, circles, triangle, whatever. Yeah. We can't do the popcorn top. We have yeah. to talk yeah. one at a time. Penny. Um, my concern is that I have this thing where it's like you know, people are going to say. Uh, what people are saying, but we have a bunch of people who have been following this whole thing, and we're going to start changing names. Okay. And the last ad that went in, didn't it go B plus yes. C minus? This is the ad that has not gone out yet. Okay, good. Okay. This is the draft. Okay. Yeah. So have we talked about these terms in so much that they become part of people's language? And I don't yeah, know. That's a good point. That's a um, good point. So that would be my up. fear on changing them, Penny, yeah. if people will get confused. Yeah, I feel though, in some ways, this allows us to prevent being put in a box by eight. If their if they're concept orange, concept pink, concept yeah. green, and we end up going for for concept purple, which is a combination, then it's less of a, it shows that we have done the work to change it, that that's not really what the options were, that that was a full evolution to new different options, and that the next iteration is going to be a full 
I'm just saying that if you change the name of something that has become a term that people are using in conversation, you need to take and say um, a concept green in parens, you would need to have yeah. option B. It's like when they change Twitter to X. So I think we kind of like, can I ask another question? I'm sorry, because that course that I just don't want to forget to ask it. It's about the survey and the career deadline. Uh, I hope this is in Pandora's box. Are we going to put the survey online? And if we are, can we put QR no, code in there? No. It's paper only? It's all paper? I know. Is that crazy or what? Yeah. Oh my God. I, I did not realize that, that you need a paper stamp. only. I need you to walk to your yeah, room. I, I mean, do you have to have an envelope? I, I mean, we always design the paper one. I didn't know there was no. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. We please stop shouting out. Sorry. I, mean, oh I was expressing surprise. I was raising hands so I could call people. <laughs> would be helpful. Thank you. Go ahead. I'm going to put that online thing on hold because that was a surprise to me. I assume we were doing what we were doing last time. Yeah. Because paper only is really going to impact full replies. Um, I don't even know what the other thing I was going to say. Oh, to Penny's point, um, yes, there are people who've been paying close attention. There are way more people who have no clue about what we're doing and are seeing this for the first time. So, yeah. Yeah. so I think um, I think the people that have been paying close attention are going to recognize. I mean, we can still say addition renovation addition renovation, new middle school renovation, or however we say it. So the what's happening in there, you could still potentially say, but yeah, it's, you know, maple, oak, poplar, or green, blue, yellow, or whatever. Okay, I'm going to say something else. Um, we have many, we have, uh, sometimes there is a tendency in life to create conspiracy theories. So if I take and change B plus to purple, what else have you changed? What have you done? I, are you sure it's the same? It's not. not. That's the whole point. It's not. It is changed. It is different. Well, B plus and purple would be the same thing. I, I um, if I can to be, uh, at this stage, I think it's easiest to keep exactly what we have now. If you want to change it to concept B plus instead of option B plus, I don't think that matters. Um, fine with that personally, but I do like, in some sense, keeping it the way it is because we also are informing. A lot of people aren't, don't know that we started with seven. A lot of people are going to get this, don't know the process we've gone through. We're going to explain that in a letter. We're going to explain that in a handout. And if they want to know how we got from, or this is transparency, how do we go from nothing to seven to three? This implies that there was a process that got us here. And we'd like people, if they are so interested, go to the website, learn about how we got there. Um, and if, if going to just option ABC or option one, two, three is, is, is problematic, then my, my preference in the interest of time, would be to keep it as is. So when we start putting purple in parentheses and transition to it, it's confusing. But it is. It's I confusing agree. Confusing unnecessarily. Larry, hands raised. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah. Thank. Thank you. Uh, I I agree that we should keep the options as they're currently designated. I really fear confusion, and as Penny pointed out, people will say, "Well." If you call it purple and it's B plus, or you call it yellow and it's C minus, uh, it's just going to confuse people. They'll be wondering, have there been some changes? What are those changes? Uh, what's the relevance of the two? I think it just sows all kinds of potential for confusion. We've been using this nomenclature for a while now. All of those that are tuning into our meetings are following it based on these current designations. And I think to be consistent, we need to retain them. I appreciate uh, Bruce's point, but the implications of that are going to, I believe, cause confusion. 
and remember every every voter will receive one of these and um and we will still be talking about options b plus c minus in 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 e so anyway that's my feeling i would really be concerned about um creating confusion this is a complicated and and very um, detailed analysis that we're providing to people and um to just increase the uh, amount of uncertainty around it is not going to benefit our communications message. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. I'm going to Tim, Caitlin, and Emily, and then Cindy. Go ahead, Tim. It sounds like there's more. I was just going to suggest we may just, this might be one of the things we just need to vote on and, and be able to move forward, but it sounds like more people want to get more input. I think you might just need Caitlin. Much to my dismay, everybody wanted to listen to the expert on question eight. And so now I'm going to turn it back around you and say that we should listen to the expert on this and give them non non weighted names. I think ABC, they all have connotations. And I think they are changing. The supplies change. I think that the people who have been following along closely who use those terms familiarly are going to know exactly what that option purple is option B. They're not going to need any help. And there are a lot of people who are not paying attention. I have a doctor who lives near Terracotta, Rosemont. Every single piece of information about school projects she gets from me when I show up to my appointment. Every time. She has no other information. Um, it's, it's a really big, like, uh, wake up call for me that there are people in town that are just not plugged into this stuff. And so I don't think it's going to cause confusion. And I think we should listen to the experts. <laughs> Emily. I'm going to let Lisa speak because we've been chatting. Okay. Lisa, go ahead. Thank you. I just, I want to echo, um, and again, I can only hear bits and pieces of it, but I want to echo, um, I think what Larry said um, and others, if you change the names, People are going to start to wonder what else has changed. Is there something hidden? You just it's lack. You try not to confuse things. Um, whether we agree with what the nomenclature is or isn't, um, any changes to it or could could have um, impacts, uh, unintended consequences at this point. Um, I do. We started on a conversation about the insert, and I don't feel like we saw that all the way through. We still don't have clarity on what the insert needs to be, what is being produced by whom, and are we providing digital copies others are printing and actually inserting these into, or what, what, how does that all look? What is the process? What's, what's the... So Bruce, if you have a mailing cost in your proposal, but that doesn't, does that contemplate the cost of these extra inserts? It, it, so the mailing costs in the proposal are reflected two page survey, you know, one page both sides and an insert. The colored insert and a black and white survey. What if the insert is two pages back and front, four pages total? I think. So what you're trying to do is you want to get under an ounce because if you go to two ounces, the postal goes go up. So I want to specify that what you seem to be wanting to include in the survey cannot be accomplished in two pages. No, no, no. I'm oh, sorry, not the survey, the answer. We for four pages. Okay. So we're going to have maybe six, but uh, that's what we're discussing. But it's more. I'm more asking like logistically what's possible. Yeah. So we're going to have eight. I'm sorry, we're going to have four sheets of paper, right? Eight sides. Well, eventually. And, and that's so I haven't included a cover letter. Uh, uh, yeah, so I mean, I got to. I don't know. I got to. Does that fit under an ounce? See if it fits under an ounce. And, sure. I, and there's that distance. I mean, it fits four color sides as opposed to two color sides. That's an additional cost. So if we have an insert, would we be providing you the electronic version and you would print it with your survey or would we provide it separately? Uh, you can go either way, whatever you want. What's easiest? Probably easiest to have my printer do it so they print everything at once and insert it. Makes sense. So Lisa, we will get to your important questions in a second. Um, 
Larry, your hands up, and then we'll get back to the insert conversation. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'm going to ask Bruce. Uh, Bruce, do you see any solution to this um, with respect to the nomenclature? We've got a question of uh, confusion by changing it and and how that works uh, in terms of the ordinary, the ordinality of the questions um, that will be posed in the survey. Do you see any solution to that? So as I, as, I, as I put my research hat on and I'm looking at the screen right now and I see option B plus and option C minus, I'm gonna say it just immediately pops in my head that option B plus is the better option. You know, or, or is a favored option, I guess is a better way to say it. Um, I don't know. I mean, you guys know better than I do how prevalent across the entire town these different names are known. I personally never referred to them, but I'm a, a sample of one, which is no good. <laughs> it's fair to say most people, the majority are not going to know that what it means. And I kind of, I, I kind of like Caitlin's thought that we're starting over. We've taken all the information that's been put in, but again, you guys have been married to this a whole lot more than I have been. <clears throat> we also have an opportunity in the letter to describe why they were named that way. No, you don't want to go there. You don't. You, I mean, we want to give yeah. some history. We're not, we want to say these aren't kind of oh, his, history in terms of we've taken all the feedback and right. we've come up with started with three nothing. new conceptual we designs. Yeah. Months. We came up with seven possible. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say you don't want to get into the fact that well no. for the survey we don't want ordinal. <laughs> and, and I will say, so with the options, we went from seven options to three. The three aren't. Those seven, it's a C minus and E plus and E3, they, they're concepts. If we call them concepts here, I mean, I, I kind of see the point about people thinking, you know, when you're writing something, you're doing something different. But if we're setting these up as concepts in general, um, maybe that's okay because what we're asking them again, even when they're choosing one concept, we're trying to say, this isn't what's gonna go forward anyway. So where we've called option C minus and option E3, if we're now saying the red concept, the blue concept, the greens concept or whatever, I don't think at least that, what else have you changed bait and switch thing is necessary. I mean, I can see it if we were getting close to a vote on exactly one of those items, but that's not what we're doing. Like this is just a, concept for how we could address needs. So that's there. All right. I, we get parking lot this, but I have some questions regarding web versus paper and some of the data from last time, because honestly, at this point, I, I can't get over not having a web component to this. Right, so let's not skip so. around topics. That's why I said we can do it for later. I just don't want to We definitely that. need to. We need to come back to this, what we're going to call things, because we're not going to decide that today. We tend to decide that. What's most pressing at quarter of 11 now is what's in the insert so we can help Emily and Lisa and her team. So thank you, Emily, for hanging with this. To that point, my, you know, my recommendation is pretty, I, I think we can be pretty straightforward if we present a version of this, and I think we're on a good start. By this, I mean the, you know, what are the three options we're contemplating? A second page that focuses on the matrix of needs that are going to be in the survey and how option A, B, C, B plus, blah, 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 option one, two, three, address those specific needs. And we can fit that on one page, but a second page, that's a page two. And then a third page, uh, around the cost implications. And if we did it that way, we could have more space here. We could get rid of the very bottom. Um, I want to point out that this is, uh, this is for the app. Uh, and it's the size. Is this is fine for the courier, yeah. but for the insert, I would rather spend more time, more, you know, use this space. Have a bit more I'm just saying the page size is not eight and a half by 11 here. Okay. It's, it's 
it needs to be half by 11 for the mail. But, yeah, but, so. but I think we could accomplish a lot with three pages, a, a version of this, a matrix of needs relative to, um, excuse me, this actually is four, four version of the needs. I'll start with the needs. Oh, so we're doing the tomorrow, but uh, Larry, Larry, we can hear you. Doing a lot better. Larry, you got a mute. Maybe you can do. Uh, needs, solutions. Putting those together in a matrix. How do these need? How do these solutions address all the needs? And then the cost. Four pages. Front and back. Two two printed pages. And then a cover letter and a survey. That would be my recommendation. Do, do you, can I? Yeah. Do you, do you really need all four sides? Because if you went with three sides, then the cover letter could be a fourth side and it eliminates a sheet of paper. Well, then you just put like the cost on, would be on this. Important. Yeah. Then you cross over. Yeah. Maybe instead of this section here, the repair, that's going to be addressed in the matrix. Maybe this, if you have used that space to focus on the costs. And then you could do it in four. There's no, yeah, there's, we'd have to cut a quarter of the content at least on this. This yeah. could be cost. I think Michael's suggesting that could become the native. That could be better than the matrix. matrix. A separate page focused on. <laughs> Would that help yeah. that much information on cost that we would put in there? So, on cost, I think we could fit cost here in a small. Oh, okay. I got yeah, you. I got you. Yeah. So then, to, to Bruce's point, we could potentially have three pages of information plus a cover letter. Yeah. So it would be eight and a half. Total. The way you do it is an eight and a half by eleven folded in half. Yeah. Um, and so we would have two eight and a half by elevens folded in half. Yes. To we mail it. Because you can, I mean, you can, you can play. I don't know how to type it, but I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, you can play with the grade of paper you're using to yes. lighten it up a little bit, but you know, you don't want to go too light, or else people be filling out the survey and it shreds, and they just throw it away. Yeah. You want high quality paper for the survey and cheaper paper for the info. Correct. <laughs> So the options with the cost is on one page, taking out the dots diagrams. The needs, what are you envisioning that being? Well, <clears throat> I would ask to see if you could come up over the coming week with a refined version of what you presented last week with some clearer language. And I'm happy to help. Yeah. I'm happy to help Wordsmith. I just want to point out, we have to build the, the PowerPoint and all of this. Okay. In, Tandem with us. I understand. I understand. This is like a very you, you built a really nice needs. Yes, but it won't fit into this format. So okay. I have to re reinvent the wheel. Reinvent the wheel. But you have conceptually, you have was it 12 needs we've identified? Yeah. You have 12 needs. You have three design concepts. And you have one to two sentences that we can put in each cell. So it's a table. And you've already started that. Yeah. Remember last week we said it was a great start. It was a lot of wordsmithing. But from my perspective, as a member of the committee, it was really helpful, much more so than, than a dot actually having context for and that's the piece that I'm most concerned about because it was several slides long, as you may recall. Yes, um, but we, we, if we, it's a good exercise to focus it to one yeah. page too, because we have people aren't going to read right, slides. Right, right. But it is the context that I think is is necessary to truly understand what are we getting. Okay. Green, purple, orange, or so, um, and Lisa, can you scroll down to the cost part here? Because there is something I definitely want to make sure. Sorry. You... Uh, can you can you speak slowly and make sure you're near the mic? Because again, it's it's really marbly. Yeah. 
Um, the, there was a request, and I, I know we've heard it time and again, I want to figure out how to incorporate it. There was a request to show the tax impact monthly in addition to annually. What can be removed from this ad in order for us to do that? Because as you can see, we are out of space. And unfortunately, the word differential is very long, and so I can't make those columns any smaller. I was trying to think, and that last bullet point, has that been resolved about swing space in the, in the notes at the bottom? Yes. Yeah. Didn't you speak to that at the last meeting? Yeah, I think you can remove that. It can, yeah. It, it can, can be removed. Okay. Um, what content on this ad can be removed so that you're I can saying, add? You're saying there's no way to insert a new column. And just put Correct. yearly tax, monthly tax. There's no way no. to do that. I, not that I can see. Not, not without there. making the tax smaller. I mean, are you sure enough? I have to add it three times. No, no, one at a time. This is so wide. Yeah. You have space here, you have space here, you have space here because of the word differential. There's a better word than differential, problem. Tax, D I F F, period. Delta. Delta. Yeah. Fraud, check. Um, tax percentage increase. Well, we're we're just tax, tax, tax increase. People know our percentages. <laughs> That's me. A lot. I myself in that kind of tax <laughs> impact <laughs> by dollar, tax impact by percentage. And, That's it. and then tax impact by month. <laughs> <laughs> tax impact. Same yeah. differential to change. You were sensitive about increase. Right. So you have to change. Tax change. Tax change. Okay. And we do want to include both yearly and I'm not monthly because we've got the base. Yeah. On the left. On the left. And we've got the total. So they could do the annual math and then have just the monthly in the grid. That's good. Now, if you've got tax impact, why not tax percent impact? That's right. Because if we discussed, we went through this before, the yeah. impact over time is if we're, we're, this is like a year to year differential versus the overall, it's slightly different. But we can use the word impact here and save the space. Percentage is that tax dollar sign impact. It's a differential over the prior year, not a cumulative impact. Which is how we ended up with differential versus impact. This is literally the same thing, right? It's the impact over this, over your base. It's the impact. This is ten percent higher than than the base. Yeah, I'm just saying that's how. This we is seven hundred and fifty-three dollars higher than the base. It's this. Save that space. Save that space. Um, so differential is. So that may not still be enough to get us what I need. My question is, are we showing just the total tax bill in um, monthly? Can I put a parenthetical and figure out how to add space up and down? Can I put total tax bill 6749 in parentheses, you know, whatever it is per month slash month? Slash ML. I think that's a concept we're trying to say that again. So if we, um, so this is the number that we're, we're not going to show tax impact this month. Can I say 67.49 and then underneath it, whatever that is per month, per ML slash ML. You mean $30 a month? Is that? This is the annual tax bill. Right. So in parentheses underneath it, mm -hmm. say, you know, well, I think the number they want, that's the number they want to here. They want to know that that's this would have cost us $30, $30 a month. That's what they're talking this about. This is where it's more important, or is it important? I think that's what people are talking yes. about. This is where it's more like logically tied. Because that right. divided by the, the impact is. Only thirty dollars a month, or it's only you know whatever. You know, right. That's kind of the. It also will do a good job of showing you know it's only twenty more dollars a month to get to 
Well, we had a public specifically asked. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got to also uh, update. I don't know if we just have the medium phone value now is 750. Oh, that hasn't been provided to us. It didn't matter. It was uh, that was it. I mean, we don't have updated tests. We don't have updated tests. Did, did we get that at this yes. or did we get that at the finance? And Matt gave us a medium. Is it enough to 750 now? I don't think it's been widely communicated because. No. Um, I mean, we're going to use the medium low value. I mean, this is all place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll I'll confirm that for you. I think I think what Matt was thinking is that Tim. I think what Matt was thinking is that we need to run all these numbers again, anyways, once yeah. we get numbers. Well, that's what we're going to be Matt's with people. So uh, whether she gets it in there now or not, it's like, we have a simple oh, table now. It'll take minutes to calculate the tax impacts. So I would Matt Matt should be able to do that. Yeah. Yes. Um. Okay. All right. Well, let me see just, what I can fit. Can I just ask a quick question? I wasn't involved in all this, but where we got F for year 25, for year 26, can we put up in, up in the empty box here, it says four years and then 2025, 2026, 2027? Yeah. I just think it's like it's set of 25. Yeah. yeah. Four years, 2025, 20, 26. It just snaps out more when you look at it. Okay, so what's your thought then, Emily, to, to so if I show a yearly remove, tax impact and a monthly tax impact? Yeah, and if I can remove that last bullet over there, that will leave a space. Which, on this the, bullet? You said I can remove that? Yes. So that'll help me a little bit. But then vertical space, I not know. horizontal space. I, I don't think there's going to be room to add three columns, even if we make those changes. But let me. Before you bring the font size down and take. I don't want. I mean, that recommended if your target audience involves people. What size do you have it at? Twelve or eleven? It's ten. Oh, it's already ten. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, when is this actually? You do not have to go. And the and the the notes actually the notes are smaller. I think. I mean, it makes the notes bigger. Um, We're going to probably know. You will probably be able to give them an update as soon as as soon as we get to school. But just well, so on Thursday's that. meeting, you're going to be determining the final scope item, which will affect the final cost, so and we'll, then we have to update we'll the staff that so we'll night. <laughs> okay. So do you have enough information to? Yeah, I'm not sure that I can pull it off, but I have enough information to try. <laughs> Look, if it comes down to it, I understand the monthly impact. It's a way of putting it into context. But are we overthinking it a little much? I know that. I mean, theoretically, someone could buy by twelve months, but through public comment. But is it is? If, I, I would like it to be there, but is it the most important thing? Is my question. I think it's very important. It's certainly like I've learned a lot about people who own their houses view their tax bill through this process. It never occurred to me that people would look at their tax bill as a as a bi-month, bi-annual sum because that's not how I pay it. I think that anybody with a mortgage thinks about this way more monthly than they do. I think it's I think it's critical. If that's the case, is there is it feasible to change all the numbers to monthly? No. no. Well, because just as there's just as many, like one thing I have learned is that there's just as many people for whom the lump sum number is extremely important <laughs> because that's how they pay their tax bills. And I think you have to meet. I think you have to meet various people's yeah. needs. Exactly. And uh, the ideal is to get them in there. So, which goes back to my previous question of does the annual value, the total tax bill in the orange column, does yeah, that also that. have to be monthly? Do I have to show parentheses for the monthly uh, cost there also? I think it's less, I think it's slightly less there because like while I do pay it monthly, I have no idea what my monthly tax bill is because it's all lumped into my mortgage. The difference is how much is your mortgage going to change by? It's not like in my head I know that my tax bill is two hundred dollars a month. My mortgage. It's just like how much could this change my mortgage? Is is more like the total tax bill? I don't know. This is like maybe I pay way less attention to this than the average person. But 
I have to make it to I know. Seven to two, three a year. Yeah. That's how much I should. That's, That's a, a number. That's I'm going to try to bring this plane to some sort of landing. Yeah. Uh, Bruce, so I know that a lot of work's going into this, but after having spent many years measuring uh, how people look at direct mail pieces, as much as possible, this has got to be somewhat skimmable. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's why the question to the mailer, that's why some of the questions in the survey should be kind of written in, to prompt people to go back. I, I agree with you 110%, but that's why I feel like some of the questions in the survey, without being leading, should lead people to want to go back and be like, oh, God, I need to go find that piece of paper. Okay. Emily, do you have enough direction to work? I do. I just have one address. One more thing, Corinne. I don't know if you're still on. No, she isn't. No, she isn't. All right. She mentioned something over email about these aerial images versus considering using floor plans. I would not recommend that we go to showing floor plans. I think it will be too small scale to read. Cindy, so and then I want to close this meeting and get to the public comment. I my comment, um, one thing about the, the pictures and the, the aerial picture, I, I like the conceptual pictures. Um, I do have a little bit of concern about showing like the traffic pattern detail and stuff on it, because I'm, I'm concerned that people are gonna fixate on, I don't like that parking lot, versus looking at it in a more conceptual way. Um, so I don't know if there's a way to do that, but I, you know, if there, I think we'll, we will get some, I mean, it's good to have feedback if they don't like the parking lot, I guess, but um, I just wouldn't want to have something in a picture that's going to imply, yes, we're definitely putting a road next to your driveway and, and, and people get concerned about it. When, are, are we looking for that feedback or are we looking for higher level feedback on? I would, I would almost think you want that. I'd be concerned, I'd be concerned with moving it because it's going to be hard to understand the overall graphic and we're going to make modifications to the roads and parking based on the feedback from last meeting. Um, but I think you could add that in whatever narrative to clarify that the building design and, you know, circulation vehicular and pedestrian is conceptual. Yeah, because we moved the location of the middle school because of feedback we got. Okay. Larry, your hands up. You're muted. Or did you? Be my okay. All right, let's move to public comment. So we'll go to those in the room and then we'll turn to anyone online. Uh, hi, Chris. Chris, I'm sorry, Chris. My microphone was. I, go ahead. Yeah, Chris, I just wanted to say I think it's vital that we keep the same columns and add one for monthly. Um, if we want to do that. But in order to have a consistent presentation of tax impacts, we have to have the annual amount. We have to have the percentage increase. We can show the um, amount uh, per month. That's merely a division by 12. And that'll give people an insight as to what the what that impact would be. Uh, but we, we need to retain those columns. Yeah, no, I, we won't take any away, but we may not be, we may not have space to add columns, so it may have to be within that same column. Thanks, Larry. Anyone in the room with public comment? Good morning. Good morning. Elizabeth Dermott, 19 Trinity Road. Just wanted to say, Caitlin had mentioned this at the beginning, but the, um, when I saw the survey posted online, it was to me, almost like the last meeting never happened because the consensus, not consensus, the majority of people expressed an interest in this survey serving a certain function, which was not a struggle. It was to uh, educate, to gain information on people's values, to direct them as to how, closer to the microphone, I'm sorry, as to how they would vote. And that is not what this survey is. It's a straw poll. And Lisa had also chimed in and said, along with the majority of the people on the communication subcommittee who expressed that, to say, you really uh, are playing with fire. She didn't use those words. Uh, because <laughs> you end up getting stuck with the decision of the, of the vote. That's what the straw poll is. And so I don't think, I think 
I mean, I guess the ship has already sailed, but it's like that meeting never happened and it was a total waste of everyone's time. Um, what you really need is information to differentiate for you as the committee how, what is valued in the community, and then you can take that information along with everything you've learned in this process to help pick an option. To me, it is just an abdication of your responsibility to make a decision in the best interest of the school and the students to just turn to the community and be like, well, what do you feel like? That's what this survey says. It says, what do you feel like? And that is an application of responsibility. And you're just going to take that information and use it, even though they are not as anywhere near as informed as you are. And I, I just think that that is disappointing. Um, that said, if you are going to do that, why don't you just go all in? Why do you need um, just do the straw poll? You don't need any other information. You can just include an insert. And the straw poll information, you don't need demographic information. If you just truly, if the purpose of this is you just want to know what people are going to vote for in their feelings, then just do that. Pair it way, way down. Have it be a page. Have it be two pages. I don't understand the value of like, and understanding the demographic information. Um, and before this goes to the voters, uh, this has to go through the school board, and it has to go through town council. Nobody's doing a straw poll of them. That's just as much an impediment to taking this to voters. So why don't we do a straw poll of the people who are the gatekeepers to it going to the public and see what they think? I mean, that's just as informative to what can get supported. Um, I also think that spending between twenty to $40,000 to send out a paper survey with no online option during spring break is a tremendous disadvantage you will not get good, meaningful information. Um, those are my thoughts, thanks. Hi, I'm Jennifer Lewis-Rader, uh, I'm Redwood Avenue, Elizabeth. Um, I think question one about how you voted last time being moved to the end and the other rapid question. Jennifer, can you just move closer? closer? Um, question one, moving that to the end with the demographic questions. I think that's a really good idea to, to reduce the uh, ability of that question to bias people and to put them backward thinking. Um, your question 14 about tax increases. In your previous survey, that the results of that question did not come close to representing the actual vote. So that would not be considered a reliable question. It did not meet the purpose of your previous question. It did not reflect the vote. So it's really odd to me that it would be asked again. Uh, so that means it has poor reliability and it also has poor validity. Validity means that it's not asking what you wanted to ask. It's not telling you how people will vote related to a tax increase. So I, I don't see a value in it. Um, it also looks like even repair is at, at least as it is at around 10% of a tax increase. So in general, I find this a, a poor question. The results of your previous survey would not support asking it again, because it didn't get at what you wanted it to get at. So I don't know why you use up all the space to ask that again. In the January meeting with you, Bruce, Bruce had mentioned that you can't put in a, an insert into the survey if you want to watch your January meeting, Bruce. That was the first one where you, and I, I apologize for calling you Bruce, I'm Jenny. I don't mean no, no, to no, okay. no disrespect. No. Okay. Um, in in the meeting in January, you had said you can't put in an insert because in a survey because it will bias people, and that is absolutely correct. Whatever you put in that survey is absolutely going to be what people will answer on. So all all surveys have biases. Um, it's really important to know what the biases are, to acknowledge the bias, and keep it in mind. So if you insist on putting in um, a pamphlet of all this information, please know that what's in that pamphlet, the way you describe the taxes, everything is going to massively bias your results. Mm -hmm. So just know that, okay, that that piece is probably predominantly educational, which is great. So please just keep that in mind, that those aren't, oh, well, you know, this group said they only do this or that. That would be a misinterpretation of where you're going with this sort of survey. Um, the other concern is that in your first survey, you, it, I believe you sent out to everybody, yeah, online and 
mailers. So now if you're restricting the people you're sending it to only being registered voters, not including it online and making your amount of time so condensed, you're, you're not even going to come close to surveying the same population as you did last time. So to think you're going to compare the last survey with this survey, why you change all the parameters of who you're, of who you're sending this to, um, it, it's not going to work. You're not going to be reflective of the first population. So if you want to be more reflective of the first population survey and compare the two, you need to do it the same way. Um, registered voters is also, if you read research on voter surveys, registered voters is not an accurate representation of who actually votes. Um, there's a lot of research for voting, and there's only two things they have found that parallel, correlate strongly to predict how people will vote. And those are the questions, how likely are you to vote in the next election? And did you vote in the previous election? Those are the only two questions found over years and years of survey research to predict how people will actually vote. So to focus on registered voters, it's not supported by research. So in general, I find this a very weak survey. It's not based on much. Um, it's much too fast. It's much too expensive. The purpose is very clear. So I find, I, I think it's way too much money to spend on this quickly put together uh, a poor, and you can do your best, it's just gonna be a poorly designed survey. It just, your results are gonna be poor. So if the primary purpose is to educate people and get this stuff out, go for it. If you think you're gonna get some huge value back, then I, I would say you're misunderstanding what this survey is capable of. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have- uh... Oh, I have to work. I, oh, yeah. I think so. All right, <laughs> we have five people as well online. I will be so fast. Um, good morning. Good morning, Eliza Matheson, uh, 270 Fowler Road. Um, I appreciate all of your time and energy for this because I know it is so much. Um, uh, other two people in here have said a lot of what I said. The discussion was really um, interesting. I just fear that we are um, coming to a paralysis by analysis moment and we are losing voters and engagement in a really substantial way. I hope that as a communications committee, we can be, start educating. We need to have extreme outreach at this point. Our voters, as you have noticed, don't know what's going on. There are There's a subset of us who are deeply, deeply engaged and then there's a real large part of our population that just doesn't know what's going on. So I appreciate your hard work. I think the survey that is going out may not be the best gauge because people don't know what they're getting into quite yet. So I, I understand the, the impetus for this and I understand the desires from this, but I don't, I agree. I don't think that we're gonna get a lot of educated um, responses back. I have a really hard time understanding why we're doing a survey over spring break in the mail without an online component. Um, we are a community of means. Many of our families travel during spring break. Um, they will be gone. In fact, we plan our school schedule around two days off prior to the week. So we have families who travel two days before and do not come back until the Sunday before. That you're looking at 410 through 421, that is our spring break. I really worry about getting those paper applications in when you're talking about a lot of people who just won't be at their houses. Um, I am really concerned about communicating the long-term investments of this project versus the short-term investments. That is something as adults, we can all relate to. We all know what that looks like. So I really hope that as the communications subcommittee, we can continue to emphasize the differences between what those investments look like, short-term versus long-term. If we are going to be investing this much money, what does it look like down the road? Are we investing this amount of money? What does it look like down the road? Um, our community deserves that. We have not had that in decades. So I really appreciate that. Thank you for your time. I will. Go get first grade teacher now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it appears I'm having the same problem as last time. Uh, Cindy, are you able to get on the Zoom version of the meeting? Um, <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, and then maybe you can call people. I'm going to apologize to attendees online I'm having trouble allowing you to speak. So I'm going to see if someone else can become a co host. Unfortunately, this happened. Thank you, Ms. Chris. All right. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Somehow it looks like they it lists me as host. Do I need to do anything to let these folks in or turn it oh, back to you? I assume it shows me. That's weird. If you're able to uh, click on the list of attendees, Lisa. Yep. And then you'll see like Rob's hand. You click yep. on that, so you should be I'll able click. to speak. All right. I'm going to click on that. There we go. That worked. All right, good morning, Rob. Go ahead, Rob. Hey, good morning. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Okay, Rob Krauser, uh, Rocky Hill Road. Um, I definitely echo the things that were already said. Um, one thing I wanted to mention was, as we're talking about the insert and trying to find room, I think you could potentially take out the tax percentage Tax percentage was what the Green Sign Brigade used during their misinformation campaign in 2022. None of the taxes are going to be that high this time around. And I think it is a lot easier for people to understand that uh, the cost, the monthly cost. And I, I think you're I think you're giving people too much credit that they're going to do the math, frankly. Um, I don't see a necessity for showing people what the taxes are for a median value house, what their increase would be monthly, and then the overall cost. I don't understand why you would need a percentage in there. It makes no sense to me. It feels like completely, completely useless information. Um, so if you're looking to save room, I would maybe suggest taking that out. Thank you for your time, everyone. Oh, oh, one last thing. Wait, before I give up my time. As someone who is sat through almost three hours of this meeting. Um, I think it's fine if you change the names. I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think there's gonna be feelings of a conspiracy from those of us who are paying such close attention to all of this. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. Lisa, could you bring up Al next, please? Good morning, Al. We can't hear you I'm sorry. Al, you should you should be able to talk now. Okay. You can hear you. Okay, yeah. I, I apparently I left my uh, comments in the Q and A window. Maybe that's not observed. But the the only uh, comment that I had that uh, that occurred at uh, ten o'clock or ten fifteen was just I think question fourteen is probably the most important uh, question, and and I just wondered whether there was a way to fold that fold the survey in such a way that that can't be missed when you open the envelope, uh, because I'm I'm sure there are going to be people who who won't go much further than that. And if you could tease them with the the tax question, you might get a better response. Uh, the other comments notwithstanding. Anyway, that was my primary comment. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Lisa, can you bring up? Uh, uh, let's see, Nicole. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, I'm Nicole Boucher, 14 Grover Road. And, you know, there's nothing new here, but never in my wildest dreams that I think this process could get even more derailed than the previous five years have been. So I guess I'm the foolish one. Um, this is me trying to get you to understand that you're losing me and many others of the 37% of voters who voted for two buildings in 2022. Um, the survey honestly feels like death by a thousand cuts. You've done surveys, you've asked for informal feedback, you have the needs information. It's just analysis paralysis to gather yet more data, like waiting for a white horse or some epiphany to make this decision for you. But you know, that's the story of us in Cape Elizabeth, analyze without action. Um, I really wish you would include information about the long-term picture. I've heard that you don't have time for that analysis, but we apparently have the time to mastermind this labyrinth of survey questions. So 
I can see you're trying here, but we are never ever getting accurate feedback if this is not sent digitally as well. It's especially over April vacation. Like call it what you want, but it just, it feels like we're going to spend a lot of money on a survey when we could send a mailer to every home about the project, like was done for the 2003 kindergarten expansion for much less money and much greater reward if your goal, if your goal truly is to educate the community. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, Lisa, bring up Chris, please. Uh, hi, hi, can you hear me? Yes, good morning. Uh, this is Chris Gorski, uh, 28 Farm Hill Road. Um, I think Nicole stole all my all my points. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think I think the timing of this is very, um, very poor. I, I think at one point there was a comment uh, made many months ago uh, by the S by uh, someone on the SBAC about, you know, we wouldn't be able to reach folks if we sent something out in uh, over the winter because people have second homes out of state. Um, now we're going to miss the people who have kids who only have one home and this is their permanent residence 100 percent of the year. We're now going to miss them because we picked the one week that. Uh, they get off from school uh, and, and take a vacation. And um, and so I, I think that's a very kind of poor a choice of, uh, of timing for this. Um, I also feel like there's a lot of, yeah, rushing. We can't we can't have the the cost information um, of long term costs. You know, we, we we've heard people balk at the two hundred million dollar thing is is much more expensive than the 60 million dollar option. But um, and and we're all wrong for thinking that the 200 million is cheaper in the long term. Uh, because it provides us a new school uh, with lower cost and no asbestos or um, potentially in the walls and, and old paint and lead pipes and, and all these various, you know, leaky, leaky roofs um, that we experience and issues that we've seen with the schools uh, throughout the years. Um, those maintenance costs go away with the new school, but we, we've not, I haven't seen any effort to communicate that. I haven't seen any effort to communicate um, anything on this project other than uh, there was a flyer that went out that had the, you know, kind of what the first seven options kind of covered. Um, and there was a little insert in the, in the Cape, I think last Cape Prairie last issue kind of went out. And I feel like that's the biggest thing is um, Nicole said it, that those of us who supported the last vote um, are just beaten down and tired by this process. I think we all are. And, and I, I appreciate everyone putting in the work for these meetings. Um, but I, I don't see how, I don't see us gaining any ground to resolve any of the concerns that were raised in the last survey um, by addressing the needs, by communicating, you know, hey, there really are problems, you know, in the schools. Here, here's examples of that. Here's here's what we need to spend money on. And, and if we don't spend money on it, here's we're going to have to spend money on band-aiding it and repairing it and fixing it anyways. Um, I, I think there's a there's a segment out there that I mean we're never going to win. There's a there's a segment that's always going to vote no regardless. There's a segment that needs to be educated more to understand the cost, and that's the segment that we should be talking to and and really looking at, you know, who what can we provide and what information, what knowledge that this group has done the great job, you know, starting to collect that and communicate that out. Not go, hey, do you want to you want to pay 25 percent in tax? You want to pay 10 percent more in tax? I want to pay 10. I want to pay 10, five negative. Can you lower my taxes? That'd be wonderful. I'll check that option all day long, but that's not the reality we live in. The taxes have to go up. Um, we have to find money to spend for this because unfortunately the town has not allocated funds for school maintenance and building projects that we, we now find ourselves in this problem. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I think a lot of the stuff that some of the other folks said, have said a little more elegantly. Um, and I just, I just hope we kind of get back to that communication and education and not trying to get an April survey to be the, the white horse, as Nicole said, be, be the answer, um, you know, that we would focus instead on education and, and informing the public of what's going on and, and the needs and the options and the solutions. And then that vote will come in November to a much more educated, supportive community who understands what's going on instead of just, oh, I got a survey about this. I voted no. I haven't heard any reason uh, to to vote yes, I'm still going to vote no. And I think that's all we're going to see in, in the survey results. Uh, but Thanks, thank you. Chris. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, bring up Scott, please. I think our last comment. Good morning, Scott. Can everyone hear me? Yes. 
Thank you, Scott Mazuzan, uh, Fowler Road. Um, thank you for all your time. Um, I just wanted to, if, I, if I'm reading things correctly, um, the last survey um, uh, with Portland Research, the costs ended up nearly doubling between um, the initial estimate and the um, second and the, and the final cost. I want to know what we're going to do to try and avoid that happening again. Um, you know, others have, there, there were a couple other points I was going to make, and others have made them quite well, but I think you know, just to really, to really affirm what, what my, my neighbors have said, um, if, if you were going to make a joke about how you wanted to exclude uh, families with children from survey results or feedback results, you know, you'd say, well, let's send it only in the mail during school vacation week. I mean, it's almost comical. And so I would urge you to please consider um, doing this electronically. Um, and um, finally, again, also with the long-term costs, if my mechanic asked me, you know, I own my car outright, do, do you want to spend $2,000 on it? To, or do you want to buy a new call, car for $50,000? Well, is the $2,000 going to get me another year, or another five years? Um, you, you can't make decisions like this without that information. And we've been saying this for months. And you know, we're not getting answers back. Um, so yeah, nothing novel here, but I appreciate your time and um, look forward to seeing what comes next. Thank you, Scott, and definitely appreciate all members of the public that were in person or online today. You, know, you stayed with us for several hours, so I appreciate that. Um, finishing up. Any other comments before we close? Penny? Yeah, just I have two things. Uh, number one, um, um, there is, in response to, I think Elizabeth brought it up, there is a plan that, uh, as part of our plan, we will be presenting the uh, materials to the school board and town council because we know they are the decision makers during that same period that surveys are going on. So they also will uh, have a chance to weigh in. The other thing is, is that uh, we're going to have to talk about this this online survey piece. I understand that uh, the conversation had been about uh, paper and I brought it up at the last meeting um, and we said that we were going to talk about it here. Um, we haven't, uh, but I would say that, and it's not just a small subset of the people who were here, uh, that um, we need to do online. We have to, and I, I don't know how you want to balance it, you know, uh, how we make paper ones available to people to get the uh, people who don't want to do online. But um, I would say that 99.9% .9 of the people I engage with, and they mostly have gray hair, would do online. That's how they do it. Uh, but I know there's a population that doesn't, and I understand we're doing voters, I understand that, but I really think that it's a, uh, it's a short-sighted decision. What if we had two weeks instead of one? We, we, we are pushing I mean, Any compromise we make that makes it online. I mean, sending out a paper survey to people during vacation weeks, it's like, we won't get any people, kids in school. Cindy. I have some questions to ask that I'd like to get the data on. From the last survey, I'd like to know what percent of responses were submitted online versus paper? What was the average age of the online respondents versus the paper respondents? And what was the prior vote of the online respondents versus the paper respondents? And I will also add last time we included return postage with our survey and are we doing that on the survey? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, and as far as detailed cost information, I'd like to see a breakdown on the cost for the survey production, the cost for the insert production, 
the mailing cost and the number of households it will go out to, and also the cost of the survey processing, which I think is in that example proposal. But I want to see the total cost of what this will, as we're describing this, going out to 7,800 voters. Last time it went to households. I believe households is around 4,000, right? 4,000 something? So uh, we're going just to... under 4,000. Um, okay, that, so we're, we're almost doubling the number we send out. We're increasing the size of the mailer, potentially. We're increasing the cost of the postage, potentially. And we're certainly increasing production costs if we're adding both a survey and an insert. So I can't see how this effort could be less than the last effort. And then we have a very short window for people to respond. Is this our best investment? If we're looking at investing that much money, turning it around quickly at a time that includes spring break with a short window to respond. And would that money be better invested in increased education and outreach efforts? Can I respond? Can I respond? Um, I understand, I understand where, where you're headed. I'm glad you asked for those numbers. Um, and I know there are many people out there who may disagree with me on this. Um, I personally understand the data that I can get from here. I'm not asking the citizens to make my decision for me. I'm asking that I can hear from people what they see as the greatest needs. I know we heard in the previous survey, but we have come a long way since uh, January. I want to know what, if they had to wait things, what is it that I need to think about around design criteria or requirements that I ensure are in whatever solution we deem to put forward. And I also want to know, and I think that going out and doing outreach is one, one element. The survey is another element. And then we roll up our sleeves and we move forward and we go, okay, this is what we're hearing. B plus is now a, uh, it's off the table. And we're going to morph this one and this one. Um, I think, I think the survey is necessary, but I go back to my point, it's got to be online. It has to be. I think it's short-sighted. It is a migrant. Are you saying it could be both online and paper or just online now? After all, we're talking about the paper can be uh, only online. We have to have, well, I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say both. that I get surveys all the time from, of course, it's the, uh, um, from the USDA, and it comes in paper, and it has a number on it, yeah, and I have to put that number in there. I know that we may not be able to have a sophisticated system such as that, but if there's a number on each survey, and they are required to put a number when they go online, you can then do a match as to whether they duplicate it. But even that, like you saw in the last survey, there was not a lot of people who were trying to gain the system. Like, we want people to take it. I, I have to tell you, as a mom of three children in Farm Cove, you're going to send me a piece of paper in the mail spring break. It's going to go into a giant piece of paper that's filled with all of those three kids' schoolwork that get sent home every day on my counter until somebody casually throws that giant pile of paper into the recycling. And when I want to go take the survey, I will be gone. It, we, these are all obstacles to people taking the survey. Can you revisit your proposal? Yeah, I mean, the only There's reason we went with paper only was because we had a long discussion about the gaming aspect. So, I mean, obviously, ideally, you want a paper and a web survey. The only reason that we presented just a paper option was because of the discussion we had at this committee. 
Did you um, that the last survey didn't have a lot of gaming, just to clarify? Correct. It right. did not. It did not. But what I what I took away from our discussions was that you thought this survey was going to have a lot more gaming, which is why we went with just the paper. Just to give you the, the survey in the summer, we got 1,102 web responses and 550 paper responses, which tells me we still got to have both. both. Yes, I, and I'm not disagreeing with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I think there's a way that you it, can electronically make that happen. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if we can take codes off of a paper survey or mailer and put it into a web survey. I have to look at that. Well, all I do is create. Do I, I can. I'll come design this. So I think you heard our feedback. It's the survey software. It's not the design of it. No, I, I guess it's I guess survey what software. Yeah. How do you how do you do Creating that? Field. Okay. No, I get that. So we're interested in hearing what it would take to do both. Yeah. You think that's where? Yeah. We, I mean, ideally, that's where I really started with. Okay. My my company, we we run thousands of surveys every week, and they all have a code. And they're all delivered over email to, because you can't have the same person taking multiple times. But to go from a to synthesize those two. Well, one that's you have a protection and one you don't, it's hard. That's all. And okay. That's all. It's not the design of it, just to be clear. Right. And it's also having um, a QR code. Uh, you know, then you've got a kind of a freebie op opt in there. So what you what we track is with IP addresses. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. perfect. Okay. So okay. you know, we're gonna try to close. Well, I'm just gonna comment. I have less concern about gaming. You know, there wasn't much gaming last right. time, and I think it's also to it, it, you know important to be able to allow for multi-voter households. Most households have at least two voters in them, um, and you know, and the, also the scope of the mailing is. Um, you know, I think you could scale back if we went to a web survey. You could scope. Scale back the scope of the mailing from one to every registered voter to one per household, like we did last time. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, some new ideas. Yep. Uh, or you can, with security without security. you can do it, Bruce. You got it. With security without security. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I'll give you 30 seconds. Uh, the, the, because we're in a small town, if people have codes, there might be concerns about privacy. That you wouldn't have with these large surveys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you all very much for your time, energy, thoughts, compromise, collaboration. <laughs> we are getting somewhere, and I know it's hard. So. We need an answer fairly tonight, just so I know Lisa's got it on her. All right, we're closed. Thank you all very much. We're here.
like, yeah. you know, and, and I would like to have my I, son and I truly believe that those would have been a little bit of a foundation. Yes. Yeah, I got and that. any other significant uh, differences. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We're going to know our buildings. So we're going to be in. Thank you.